four. I, I guess we are live. Yeah, I'm not good with them. Like five, <laughs> four, three, and we are live. No, it's it's hilarious because we're we're still primed from the old like uh, hangouts days where it would just yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of pause on you forever. And I got to say, Streamyard is way faster. <laughs> just a lot you faster, into a, a lot stream. more responsive. Um, and for me, at least, it's a lot easier to kind of uh, manage the whole overall experience. For I find real. it just more streamlined and um, obviously for a stream yard. Uh, but it's also because of the fact I'm able to broadcast directly from for you know YouTube and to uh, well Periscope at this point at this point. Uh, but I can actually do two YouTube channels, which was really nice. Um, although being that one of my channels is in Arabic, it's a little bit hard to kind of do a either one language only in two different YouTubes. But it's cool. Like mm -hmm. if you have multiple channels. You're For able real. to live stream, you know, consistently. Uh, but Sabaha, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today is your episode of uh, Saturday Morning with with Tech. I keep wanting to say with a side of tech, but I think I dropped the side part of it. I, I um, think you should, I mean, like, call call the show, I mean, like, title the show. But I think when you when you announce the show, I think Saturday Morning with a side of tech. It is. is it, 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 that's perfect. what the initial intention was. I just uh, I shortened it for the name because when I was creating the um, the podcast for it, I was like, man, that just sounds like a really long title for somebody to kind of look, you know, if they're like, which show for is sure. it? Saturday morning. And then I, there was apparently a lot of Saturday <laughs> morning podcasts. So um, but yes, uh, welcome back to the channel. Good morning. Uh, of course, as usual, welcome back. Friend of the show. Uh, hashtag some gadget guy, some guy in the channel guy, and some guy smiling at you in the screen guy, uh, in uh, you know Juan Carlos Bagnell, or you know as we like to call him JC, or actually I call you Juan Carlos always. I don't know why, but uh, no, I, I mean I, I'll I'll reply to anything. Just don't call me late for dinner. I've never ah. understood what that means. You know, it's like that witty like 1920s tall pants fast talking kind yeah, yeah, of never, banter. Just don't call me late. <laughs> but I don't know. But I like. I really don't know what that means. But I love we saying it. it but I don't know what it means. That could be the uh, the subject for our next video. <laughs> right? He was like, "What? Just what? Don't call like, me uh, what? What? What kind of 1930s slang can we repurpose for a modern <laughs> for a modern day podcast? No, definitely. And um, so today is the last Saturday of May. It's May 30th. Um, I always have to look for the date because I have no idea what date it is. It's always something that you have to kind of keep in check with the with the current situation as things have been going on. Um, and as usual, in, in the live stream, we have uh, all of our friends are jumping in. Uh, I do apologize for being a little bit late this morning. Uh, a little bit of a technical problems going on with getting the live stream ready. Um, my my Adam Mini wasn't being recognized, so my cameras weren't fe feeding correctly into StreamYard. So I was I was like worried for a second that we were going to have to scrap the whole thing, but uh, or do it on on a smartphone or not a smartphone, but like do it out of a webcam, which totally would have killed. Oh me. yeah, no good, no good at yeah, all. Yeah, no, definitely. But, but, and, but in in keeping with your your technical difficulties, uh, people might notice that uh, my side of the stream looks a little different because. We're trying to use a phone to stream part of this, so we'll see how that goes. See, see, that's that's the type of experience you're getting here. And um, so I see a DTN <laughs> in the problems. Uh, yeah, I see a DTN <laughs> in the chat. I even see Huang Bagnell in the chat. I, I'd like to say that. See that. And Gary, of course. Good morning, Adam. Oh man, David Burns. Welcome back. Welcome back. I have for uh, Brian, of course. Man, all all the all the usuals. Welcome back. And um, so t today we're gonna we're. This stream was actually it had actually three different dates this week. We originally were going to do it, I think, was it somewhere on Tuesday, right? Or was it, yeah. I think we were going to do Tuesday. Well, we did, we ended actually, up doing a, a Tuesday stream on my channel because yep. we, um, it, with, with everything that's been going on and, and for how crazy this stuff gets, we, uh, we also have to play into the realities of running YouTube channels. Um, mm -hmm. we, we couldn't do our normal you know, first day, first impressions kind of a stream because we were also putting out embargo videos on a Sunday. And if you put four videos up on YouTube on, on a Sunday, it's going to wreck your channel. And, and oh, it, it is actually one of the, the frustrating aspects of trying to keep your your channel metrics healthy is mm -hmm. I feel for both of us, like there are probably times where we'd want to put out three videos in a day, but then also how how much content can people really watch? And then also the YouTube algorithm is going to bury you. And so well, we had to kind of spread this stuff out. Yeah, no, no, exactly what you're saying. And uh, YouTube, I think if you post more than two videos in a day, they don't even notify your subscribers or anybody with yeah. a third video. The third video is like, eh, it's there. It's, and it's, and, uh, and, it's and we, we both are, are doing the thing. I mean, again, it's, it's why we're so appreciative of the support of you guys out there is 
we're not setting up separate podcasting channels. And so our yeah. YouTube metrics, you know, for when we do one of these long, long live streams and when we put out individual shorter, more polished and edited videos, it actually is harmful to a YouTube channel to keep that all in the same place. The YouTube algorithm is actually very punitive <laughs> about stuff like that, which which isn't fun. But also it's like we want one singular place for y'all to come and hang out. I mean, for each of our channels, but we want one place for y'all to come and hang out as opposed to trying to like spread this all out in more places on YouTube than we really feel like you should have to keep track of. True. And and I think one of the main things that we also want to keep in mind is um, it, the timing. Like you said, you kind of started off when you said it. Normally, we've done it in the past with, you know, with the iPhone SE, with the V60. Uh, we usually do like a Thursday night, Friday afternoon video right on the, uh, you know, Juan Carlos will do the initial impressions. That's like the 72 hour impressions. And then we try to close it up on Saturday. But this time, again, started on a Sunday. Short answer, we're back, we're here, we're together, and we're finally running. Um, and Juan, if you can let everybody know, what setup are you using? What What is the, the reasoning uh, of the for us to be able to see the top part of your apartment or your office? <laughs> right, this, this is a, a wider, let me see if I can even scooch it in a little closer. Uh, no, no, it, might, might the angle is over. fine. I just, but you could definitely tell I'll, you're using a different I'll, type I'll, like, of camera. I'll meerkat for the whole for the whole podcast, so I have good posture. No, I. So at first, I I was sorting out a couple technical difficulties myself this morning. My wife uh, was was gracious enough to go make a grocery store run, uh, putting her very life in peril. Um, and uh, we we wanted to try and see if we could. Uh, th that's a rambly way to get into this. I I'm shooting this on the Xperia One Mark II, so that's that's ultimately what what we're what we're trying to check out here. But then also, really using mobile devices. Uh, it's always something that I've I've had the intention of doing more of, but the production schedule's just been so lean these days. Like I'm trying to blast as many videos out as possible, but this is something I want to get back to. Where yeah. if we're going to make these claims that these phones can really step up and and unseat laptops and stuff, well, here's an example. This is a practical example of what you're going to look like using the front-facing camera on an Xperia to uh, to host this kind of a stream. See if we can do something a little bit close to what you're doing. So <laughs> I can't be in the same position, but here is the back-facing sensor on the Xperia Mach, uh, 1 Mach 2, or mix, Xperia 1 I, I, I don't know, whatever you want to call just, it. So this is what let's I, what I let's would call like. it the Mark 2. I like calling it yeah. the Mark 2. It is the Mark 2. Uh, it's just that it doesn't default sideways. I think unless I jump into, if I'm not mistaken, Cinema Pro. And I think yeah, Cinema Pro will give you landscape. But Cinema sure. Pro is not really intended to be used indoors. Um, not with this light. I wouldn't look good on Cinema Pro anyways, even if I wanted to. Short answer. <laughs> Welcome. We're C both running Cinema Pro. Cinema Pro is too accurate. So I'm going to use yeah. the selfie camera, which is going to soften me up a little bit. And make yeah. Me look. And if I, if I want to be able to, yeah, look, here you are. And then the front facing selfie camera, you know, galore. Uh, I guess the best way to And do then it. The, 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 exciting, the exciting part of using the Xperia, obviously, for anyone who cares about mm -hmm. having a high quality and premium smartphone, is uh, I woke up this morning and the Xperia had about 30% battery. So I've got it plugged in. And I also have headphones connected because you have a headphone jack okay. and a USB-C. It's like <laughs> magic. It is by far one of the most versatile pieces of tech to date. And um, the number one thing I've sorry, since you and I we started talking, obviously we did our content on Sunday. We talked a little bit about it on Tuesday. Um, I was uh, over yesterday on the um, Android Authority, not Android. Why did I just say Android Authority? And I'm sorry, Pocket Now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I hung out with Josh uh, talking a little bit about Xperia as well. And um, I think the the one thing that I realized that I I, I, I a lot of people. You know, ask. There's a lot of obviously demand to know more about the Xperia One, uh, the Xperia One Mach Two, and uh, the one thing that I've noticed a lot of people keep wanting to do is to compare it to other devices on the market, other devices that are mm -hmm. somewhat maybe in the same price point, or maybe you know are you know using higher megapixel sensors or so on. And the the general impression that I like to give people, and I, I'm trying to make it very clear, is that the Xperia One Mach Two is truly a a prosumer tool. It's a camera that's truly trying to give you a an alpha experience, a Sony alpha camera experience in a mobile device. 
you're able to use external sources like Juan was saying um, from either a headphone jack or USB-C. Uh, you're able to get actually, the sensors are actually bigger pixels. These are not just because they're 12 megapixel sensors. You're like, oh, well, they're just 12 megapixels. They're using the same. These are very different than last year's. These are bigger yeah. pixels. We're not talking about pixel binning. We're actually trying to say it in a sense, Sony's trying to do a lot of the legwork for image processing on this device on the sensor side. They're trying to give you better pictures before your phone gets a chance to go in there and do an algorithm an algorithmic uh you know processing of it to make it look better which is what we generally see with other devices so it is by far in its own class it should be looked at as a professional camera brought down to a smartphone and that's the experience that you need to set yourself up when you're looking at it and so that that's you know I have said that on Tuesday and I said that yesterday on on uh, on the pocket now's podcast and I feel like this is something that a lot of people, I think some of the initial impressions that I've seen with other videos, um, they're skimming over some of that conversation there. They're just, yeah. they're literally um, evaluating it as a standard smartphone. Well, I, I, I want to put this out here because I feel like um, that this is actually the beginnings of a very positive trend. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. I don't feel it's always manifesting in a positive way, but I hope that this is a trend that, you know, TK and I can lay a little credit for where... I feel because of this rush, uh, Qualcomm component pricing, the USA carrier market for 5G, um, sort of these monopoly, oh, wow. uh, quasi monopolistic business practices that were, um, we're, we're seeing the beginnings of a sea change. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of YouTubers were kind of normalizing thousand dollar phones last year with iPhone and with Note. Right. You know, the, the Note 10 started at nine hundred and fifty dollars for a 1080p display and no expandable storage. Right. And that's for the yeah, reason, the standard model. Exactly. And, and for whatever reason, we 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 kind of spoke of Samsung and Apple with a little reservation. But those phones still got implicit by recommendations because they're Samsung mm -hmm. and they're Apple. And this year. We've seen those prices hike even higher. The Galaxy S20 Plus is currently the top selling premium phone. So we've normalized yes. the conversation around $1,200. But what I'm seeing is some pushback from the YouTube community now. You know, like, oh, we're very concerned about OnePlus raising prices. And we're very concerned about the Galaxy Ultra. And we're very concerned about this Xperia 1 Mark II. And I'm hoping that this is now going to help with a conversation where we're doing a better job of picking out who these devices are for. A $1,200 mm -hmm. phone cannot be the general recommendation for everybody. That has to be resonating in consumers' brains right now. So, Absolutely. So when we're, we're faced with that situation, now hopefully we're, we're, we're not just picking up the Xperia 1 Mark II, using the Xperia camera app, firing off four photos in auto mode and going, oh, but I don't like the color science as much as what the Galaxy does. Or a Pixel's going to crush it because that is not what this phone is built for. And, and, and it like that message no. is struggling to get through, but I feel like it's starting to break through. I feel like people are, are starting to, to grok that a V60 it's not just Snapdragon 865 at eight hundred dollars versus Snapdragon 865 at twelve hundred dollars. There is much, much, much more to a conversation than just two or three bullet point specs and then the price tag and then ignoring sales. <laughs> exactly, and and I and I think the also the the comparison a lot of I mean I and I so the first video that one put out this week was the comparison between the V60 and the uh, the Xperia One Two, One Two. We'll be calling it as Xperia the II. Mark II. The Mark II. Just say the Mark actually, II. Yeah, actually, that's, yeah, let's just keep calling it the Mark II. Iron, There's no, Iron Man yeah. armor. I'm, I'm trying Iron, to make that the thing. I want that to be the thing. Sony, <laughs> if you're watching, we want a red version with Iron Man armor on this thing. Gold you call it a Mark II. You got to put out an Iron Man edition. Make yep, it yep, happen. Yep, yep, yep. Hot rod red with a little gold trim. I'll, I'll drop my it. credit card right there. Just go ahead and make it. I'll buy it. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, I just saw a uh, an Oppo phone that was released that had the Evangelion uh, theme on it. Uh, I think was it the Reno 3? or uh, It's a Reno, but it's... it's actually, I forgot the which one it is. It's the latest Reno they have. And so, as someone soon please as... rem remind me. Someone in my Discord shared that launch video, and like yeah. it stopped my whole day. It's the... the oh, my, I, I just... 
I, it was I such love a how Oppo too. does this. Yeah, they do so that good. all the time, though. They always have these little editions of their devices. Uh, so this one's only going to be in like 10,000 units being sold. I haven't seen exactly where it's available yet, but I'm really tempted to pick it up. Not to even use the phone. I just want to look at it. <laughs> this is weird. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a piece of tech that you'd never want to open. You just want to enjoy looking at it. It's a collectible. So It's uh, like that for line me, of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I just want to keep it in a garage and wipe it with a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> mint. We need to keep it mint guy. Yeah. Oh, hashtag some Reno guy. <laughs> some Reno chill guy. Okay, we got it. Aditya got us covered with the, with the hashtags. Um, oh, hey, uh, Matt. I think Frat Brothers is in the uh, in the comments as well. How are you doing? You How are you? How is everybody? Yeah, he just jumped in. Oh, and, right um, on. Excellent. Thanks for joining, Andrew, and and of course everyone else, and David Burns oh, yeah, no, no. and Nem. All right, yeah, we got a good yeah. crew in here. So I, I we mean, do. like we we we've we've preambled you, again. I, I feel like if you followed either of our channels, this is also TK and I's time to catch up. You know, like you're basically just sitting in on our FaceTime call. You know, like, that's generally what this is. Actually, if you think about <laughs> it, really, um, we don't but, get but, a chance to hang out anymore. But bearing the lead, it, it took us a long time to spread out some of these videos. It kind of got us a little off our normal schedule and doing some of these live streams. But but yeah. I also feel like for, for talking about the Sony and using this as a practical example of using the Sony, there are also a few other things that we want to talk about with some of the phones. We're kind of into the halfway point of the year. We're getting to that yeah. to the begin, you know, beginning of summer. Um, kind of recap what's been going on. 2020 has been a super weird year. And then both of us still have a ton of phones that we're chewing through on top of, you know, really getting into what we can do with the Mark II. So I, I please keep a, I'm seeing some great comments and stuff. Please keep those questions coming because we're going to be um, jumping in and, uh, yeah. and, and responding to that. But then at the same time, TK and I are also going to talk about what we had for lunch yesterday. You know, like that's kind of how we run these things. Speaking of which, no, um, yeah. So we'll start off by saying this. Um, so the, there's a few videos. If you has if you haven't had a chance to check them out, there's a few videos that, that went out. Um, uh, also, if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, please make sure to check out Juan Carlos's uh, Patreon. He is actually putting out some good content also about the Xperia uh, Mark II. Sorry, the Xperia One Mark II um, over there. I think your audio deep dive was uh, was put out this week as well. Which, if you haven't seen, you gotta check it out. Um, so for me, I always love to leverage some of the work that Juan does because I feel like if I'm focusing on one side of the work, he focuses on the other side of the work. And at, at the end of the day, we're able to give you a, a fuller uh, story. So um, and the fact that we both have the device, which is also very nice, that's generally timing has always been an issue. But last few devices, you know, the the uh, iPhone, the V60, good, yeah. I think we're we're good. I think that our proximity is starting to work for to our advantage. Uh, <laughs> but um so, you know, we did our initial impressions are obviously the initial videos earlier in the week. I did a couple of gaming videos. Uh, one, obviously, just as I kind of alluded to on Tuesday that I was pushing it out on Wednesday. And actually, that one's been doing well. Um, very surprised with the tools that we have when it comes to gaming when, uh, into the Xperia. And of course, um, even though it's a camera specific, you know, focused type of a product, as obviously photography is a big portion of the story that Sony's trying to say. Uh, but gaming this year has also been something that they are focusing on. And there was a couple of videos that actually both of us posted yesterday, totally coincidental, mm -hmm. did not plan it this way within a couple of hours of each other on the same <laughs> subject. Uh, <laughs> I was like, as I'm posting and I'm going through my feel like, wait a minute, that's not my thumbnail. Why is it? Oh, wait, that's fun. <laughs> I was like, I but, but again, but, but this is what's been so exciting. I feel for phones like the V60 and phones like the Mark II is, yeah. you know, it, it's worth it. It's worth it to put out that individual one-off video on stylus support for V60. Yeah. Cause this is a this is a power user feature. This is not an average consumer need mm -hmm. um, in a smartphone, but this is something that often goes overlooked in the sort of grand scheme of smartphone reviewing. And exactly. I, I I know for a fact that now that TK and I have both individually talked about stylus support on the V60 and power control on on the on the Mark II, this will be commentary you see piping up in other reviews once people start getting once more people start getting their hands on the phone, especially with this really strange sort of disjointed retail launch that Sony's yeah. kind of been forced into with everything Which, that's going on in the world right now. Mm -hmm. um, without that kind of stuff on people's radars, the Mark II becomes a very it, it becomes a very easy phone to pan. 
But once you start understanding, I mean, again, Sony engineers, Sony camera division and Sony manufacturing have a much different idea, a very unapologetic idea of what their phone should look like. There's there's a method to this madness. It just takes a minute longer to untangle that method than when we're way more familiar with Samsung's and Apple's. It, it is. And and I think I, I love the fact that they stuck to the iconic design. It's just it's a purely Xperia design. Like you don't mm -hmm. there's no question when you see this, it's like that's an Xperia. Which Xperia is that is the question that you should be getting. Um but yes, so if you haven't had a chance to check those out, they're obviously they've posted online and we maybe if you guys have any questions on those, we'll try to circle back with you guys on those. Um as far as the actual experience overall, I wanted to kind of get your impressions. Obviously, it's not enough time for us to kind of give a full review of this device. It, we need more time to kind of dig into it. As we spend more time with the phone, more things are being discovered as, mm -hmm. you know, per, per the conversation. And um, I, I, I've I really enjoyed the fact that we are able to bring this conversation and, and speak it in which what I wanted to actually kind of share with everybody. Um, we both, Juan, uh, Juan and I, have actually been doing quite well in the Xperia forum <laughs> over on Reddit. Well, I, I want to thank there's there's a crew of um, there's a crew of folks in the Sony Xperia subreddit, and then also a crew of folks in the LG V60 subreddit that yeah, no, have been definitely organically sharing because uh, we're neither of us very popular on like our Android. Um, no, so uh, uh, <clears throat> why why? This also kind of contributes to that conversation. I, I am much I more excited yeah. to, to to spend a minute trying to figure out who is oh, the yeah. right fit for this kind of this oh, kind here of we device. Are. So exactly, that, that was, <laughs> I had to scroll down. I know we were there. I've seen. I, I saw it before. So, uh, <laughs> but but again, so this, this is this is speaking to something where there's there's a crew of people who are fans of LG. There's a crew of people who are fans of Motorola. There's a crew of people who are fans of Sony. And they are not represented when we get Absolutely. into more mainstream tech reviewing. And it, it, you know, it's not to say like TK and I are going to be the captains of the island of misfit toys, but it's it's to acknowledge that there are that, that there are different use cases. That, that, that there are different you know needs out there than just this no this mythical notion of the average consumer. And so yeah. I, I feel it's our responsibility to make sure we're, we're being, you know, clear about what our intentions are. You know, I'm not trying to say, well, if you really like your Galaxy, you you foolishly ignored the the Xperia. And this is a phone that everyone should use because it beats all of the other uh, competitors. It's never about winning and losing. As soon as you start thinking about winning and losing, I feel you're off the plot, you know. Um, but but it's can we find the exact right fit as opposed to something that's just sort of generically good enough because i think that's lame and i think that's boring and it makes smartphones yeah. basically a dead commodity if only samsung and apple get to dictate what the future of smartphone design should be it and it, exactly and and i think that's one of the reasons why i appreciated the 21 by 9 aspect ratio especially when i started so i had it literally about a week or so before i got the experience the, the mach 2 um i actually got the uh, I guess the first one, the Mach 1, uh, mm -hmm. the first generation of it. And uh, it's a very nice form factor. I even got a chance last year to play with the Xperia 5. So for me, the cinema wide is uh, definitely appreciated. And of course, it also translated for me in games because of the gaming experience that they're trying to tout with this. Um, the front facing speakers, actual having front facing speakers on this was definitely a big plus for me. Nothing's mm -hmm. wrong with the side mounted speaker, but it's from the experience of just directional audio, just it makes it louder, it makes it more focused, and it's easier to actually consume, especially when you're trying to play games and you're trying to be more aware of where people are shooting or do, uh, basically going around uh, from that experience. And of course, having a three and a half millimeter headphone jack with that zero latency, well, that and, was and, by far- And real quick, getting back to yeah. the speakers. First of all, I think Sony's done a phenomenal job of balancing, because obviously you don't have the exact same speaker module no. yeah, exactly. in places, it's, especially for exactly. phone calls. But TK, can you do me a favor? Can mm -hmm. you hold up your Xperia 1 in landscape, sort of blocking your eyes like you were using it to censor your face? No, like pulled it like right up against your face. And if you notice, this phone is long enough that that stereo separation actually kind of lines up with your ears. You know, this is a very subtle and a, and a, and a very nuanced benefit. But yeah, left, right stereo speakers that are almost at your natural ears difference 
kind of makes a difference on a phone. It's, it's, a, big, a, it's a very subtle difference. effect, but it's noticeable. And, and that contributes to um, a part of this experience that I think is easy to overlook if you just kind of generically fire up a movie and you kind of get on with your day. Sony, the PlayStation company, has an idea about what their phone should do. And that's mm -hmm. a part of that, th this hardware that contributes to a philosophy that that is very unique. It is not quite like any other phone out there, even though some of them get really close to this. It's it's just that little bit Sony different. They're, they've, they've combined a different set of uh, features from different devices. I mean, so we have other devices that do feature a thinner, a thinner, more profile, like a longer, thinner profile, but they haven't really reached the, reached the cinema wide feature. Mm -hmm. um, the ROG Phone 2, and I'm sure that's going to tick off. <laughs> Sorry. Well, is he in the chat? I didn't see Matt in the chat. Matt, he's no, not in the, Matt in the chat. Was, That's not was poking happen. around, but we know Matt's going to be all about ROG 3. Yeah, um, ROG 3. But but it's interesting seeing, you know, like people, oh, I don't know, this might be too tall and skinny. And then you've got phones out there that are 20.5 by 9, and they seem to be fine with folks. So again, I feel f people are being very selective in their concerns about certain brands. So, but, you know, so, but to summarize kind of like, you know, it's, I think it's it's not not everybody is going to enjoy or like the Xperia what the 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 Mach two. It's not going to be for everybody. It's not going to basically fit everybody's need. Uh, there are certain things that, as you said, they do very well in the sense of the, basically the photography, uh, the videography. This year, there's definitely a big push in that into the into the system, where where. Um, not only the video pro mode has been is obviously on its own with the cinema pro but we also took the photo pro mode that used to be built into the original camera ui into the into being its own camera system so now we have cinema pro camera pro and the ui elements that we get within these two applications have been updated so cinema pro looks a little bit different than what we had last year the selection of the lenses that we have the different features the project base uh, they've also kind of shifted away from using the uh, sony uh, album application they're using google photos there's a yeah. Lot of different pieces there that kind of changed the interface in there but the fact is that they kept the shutter button they kept that experience the ability of using your phone like a camera it just feels so much different for me especially when i want to take a, a picture in photo pro it forces you it forces you to use the shutter button on the outside you there is no button in there on the ui for you to be able to tap on to take a picture that's a design thing that just those are little elements that just make it so much more enjoyable to, to use a device like this. And the weird part is I didn't know I was going to be this excited about it. Yeah, I, me you know, but before getting it, I, mean, I, I, I was it. most it was it was I've been saying it since the beginning of the year that this was my most anticipated showdown, whatever the next V series is going to get against the, the next Xperia. Next Xperia. I really liked what I saw from the Mark One, and I felt like you know we, we're going to see Sony refine this. And and again, the more you dig into this phone, the more you find contributing to uh, that that excitement um, for what was uh, for 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 what I was anticipating. I feel Sony has completely achieved. And then Absolutely. I'm still finding a couple little little gems here and there, exactly. a couple little sneaky features mixed in that I didn't know I needed that until I had it on a phone. And now I want that on every single phone. And it's not enough to just wait until Samsung and Apple copies them. Like this becomes a, a much stronger buy recommendation when you're factoring in specific kinds of use. I That was actually uh, for my video yesterday when I started the video, I said other OEMs take note. Or steal yeah. this now. You you need to copy this feature now. This this should be a standard. This should not take you that long to implement to your next update. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about our impressions. Is there if you can maybe just I'll I'll, I'll hand it off to you obviously as the guest of honor. Um, in if possible in a in a short form, would you be able to give your initial impressions of of the experience or the Mach two? What are your thoughts? Um, do you have any concerns? And um, other than obviously that last little feature that we talked about, is there any other little gems that are surprising you still? You know, after having it for about a little over actually about a week, right? It's yeah, usually about a week. I was going to yeah, say we're, yeah. We're closing in on. I mean, like I think the Mark two was dropped off about in about an hour from a week <laughs> so by the end of the stream i'll have had it literally the box in hand for about a week um exactly so yes uh this hold on give me one second just to collect my thoughts from from sidetracking myself 
And as you do that, I'm going to try to figure out how to actually feature you as the main person. <laughs> no worries. Bounce it around. Do it. Do it. I, I, I don't do know it. how to do, do this. It. Oh, here. Yeah, there That's you go. That's how you do it. So, I, yes. Uh, very succinctly, we have an amazingly competitive power user device. And power user doesn't mean we're going to copy a Galaxy Note and then try and sell it for less. Uh, there are very specific pros and cons. Um, I'm very pleased with the performance that I'm seeing so far. It is so refreshing to use a phone more like a standalone camera. Um, how much I've enjoyed getting back to having a dedicated shutter button on a piece of hardware. And then yesterday, really digging into HS power control. That that to me has been the 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 amazing gem discovery for this phone. Adaptive battery and timed recharging was the amazing find for the Xperia 1 Mark 1. And then I was so happy to see everyone sort of copy that with different adaptive battery settings on different devices. Um, but this year, having that power pass through is such a huge perk for specifically the type of consumer who would be interested in this device. So, so far, I, I, the only concerns I have are going to be the North American rollout and where this phone might fit into um, carrier strategies yeah. because of how reluctant Sony is, or, or I mean, I should say how obstinate Sony has been in playing ball with uh, North American carriers. We don't have any proper confirmation on things like 5G support or whether or not it's been certified to work on any carriers. And this might arrive as a 4G only device. Mm -hmm. I do have some concerns about that. I mean, I think that's fair to have some concerns about the longevity of a phone that might not be able to play ball um, with the, the future network improvements that carriers are going to make. Uh, to the same token, like why I get so frustrated with people who shrug off 5G. Like I, I was watching a stream last night where two of the hosts were like, OnePlus hasn't done anything for me. There, you know, you should never buy the OnePlus 8. You should only be looking at the OnePlus 7T. It's a way better buy. And I feel that's irresponsible because OnePlus is a phone that could last three years. And Absolutely. in three years, what are your carriers going to do with your network? I just got 5G fired up in my neck of the woods, and I used to yeah, struggle. Yeah, I heard. I saw that recently that you finally so, got the 5G signal to show. So I, I used to struggle getting a 10 megabit download on LTE, and now I'm pretty comfy at around a 30 meg download on 5G. So if you're buying a phone today and you're buying an LTE device, expecting it to get two to three years of life out of it, as the networks evolve around you, carriers aren't going to be putting more money into LTE. They're going to be moving to their 5G solutions and devaluing the consumers who are on LTE. Because we saw the exact same thing moving from 3G to 4G. Was yeah. There really wasn't a major speed improvement, but tell me that you still wanted to be on CDMA 3G three years into the LTE launches for Verizon. It Absolutely. was completely devalued and your your reception was good. I mean, your 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 bandwidth and backhaul was garbage as every carrier started pointing the, the bulk of their bandwidth over to LTE. So I have similar concerns when we're talking 5G and LTE in 2022, you know, at the end of 2022. And, and, and the fact that it's it's a 2020 device coming out with for, with with LTE basically, and um, so from what I understand, at least from the, th the things that I've heard on my end. Uh, and before I go too far, I want to say first, thank you for more. For, thank you very much. Uh, um, obviously, Fat Produce for the five dollar uh, super chat, and definitely the uh, the ability of extending the battery the battery health on on a smartphone, especially with the day and age of fast charging. Everybody wants fast charging, and a fast charging generates a lot of heat. But on top of the fact that when you're game, when you're playing games, when you're doing you know um, I think device intensive uh, activities, that alone generates its own type of heat, and and then of course adding battery heat to that, you're pretty much just decimating the life of your battery. And these are sandwich devices. Replacing batteries is not as easy as any of the you know as as Juan would probably pull out the uh, Note Four, and just show us some one of his favorite gaming phones of all time. Uh, <laughs> arms length this time, arms length. Got it. I had it. I had it ready. Exactly. Yeah. No, replaceable batteries. So um, for me, I think both one and I did a little bit different of as an experiment. So zero lemon, dude. Nice. <laughs> I so like them. I, I, I can't tell you how happy I am 
because the the battery that I had was was shutting the phone off at around forty percent, so it yeah, was a I, dead cell. I've and seen I the didn't phone realize that I had zero lemon before, but yeah. So so I I I I didn't realize also how poorly the phone was performing because of how messed up battery. that battery was. So it's not like this is a fast phone by today's standards, but it's it's quicker and more responsive. It feels like I have a brand new Note 4 all over again. It's like and you double the amount of RAM on a PC and you suddenly <laughs> are like, things slowed up faster. <laughs> Whoa! And yeah, that's like, what batteries do to our phones as they start throttling because of the power issues that come with having batteries degrade inside. And I miss this so much. I miss like absolutely. what I just did right here, ripping the back off of a phone to just pop out a battery is so, so handy. And we've we're, it's My just gone. My own experience. My only experience in 2020 right now with a replaceable battery on a phone is with the Kyocera Dura XP. <laughs> yeah. It, actually, it's a rugged phone with a replaceable battery. Who would have thunk it with Android 9.0 and um, I mean, no touch screen, but like, you know, it's a, it's a UI that's intended to be more, you know, suited for a durable device. But um, I did want to jump over on my side with the impressions and I don't want to skip yes, over. Uh, David had a good comment in there um, talking about basically the usability of uh, on the on the Xperia uh, on the Mach 2 and the fact that if you're trying to take low light imagery with that device, obviously having to use a, a physical button on a, on a device will ultimately introduce movement into the, the actual phone because you're actually having to push a shutter button. I need to test out a little bit more with Bluetooth connected shutter release uh, functionality. If you've ever yeah. seen those little devices that we generally use with selfie sticks, they usually come with a Bluetooth uh, shutter release. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that should also work the exact same way with the Xperia One, uh, with the Xperia One Mach Two, allowing you to actually do shutter releasing, uh, you know, taking images in low light without having to touch the device when you have it mounted on a on a but, tripod. But, but to, to that point, um, my, uh, we went out for just a little bit of a drive uh, last night, and we were just mm -hmm. kind of cooped up, and um, we're we're not too far from from the beach. So oh, yeah. uh, from your end, it's just you have to go over the mountain and just yeah, we just drive. we just have to hike the hill and we're at we're down in Malibu. Um, oh, oh, so yeah. we went out driving. We didn't really have any intention of stopping, but we we found this one little stretch of uh, PCH um, mm -hmm. where there wasn't anyone parked. So we pulled over and just like from from the side of the, the street. So if you go to my Instagram, I shared yeah. a photo that I took uh, about 30 minutes after sunset um, off the ocean. And mm -hmm. that's from the Xperia Photo Pro app. The, the, the thing that I feel people are going to criticize and not understand is Sony on the on the Mark One and the Mark II, those those camera buttons are not clicky. Like they are spongy by design. And if you mm -hmm. feel like the shutter on a lot of modern cameras, there's a less definite click because of exactly what you're describing. So it's not like when you use a volume rocker as a shutter button on another phone and you have to press. I mean, you, th there's force applied. This has got a very definite sponge into where it's focusing, and then it's just completing the rest of that squeeze. If you'll pardon the metaphor, it's not unlike how you sort of train for using a firearm. You're supposed to squeeze into it. You're not supposed to pull or or or, or, or uh, you know uh, squish it. You know you're not supposed to clench on it. No issues. Seriously, there's great image stabilization. The sensor is super large. It can yep. it can maintain a surprisingly fast shutter speed even in very low light conditions. And if you look at the photo on Instagram, that's nighttime with just a little bit of glow from dusk. And exactly. It's. It's it, it. I mean, it's actually almost a little disappointing how bright that image is because of how dark the real conditions were. It was it was absolutely fantastic, and the and the the, the auto focusing is on another thing I I wanted to talk about is the the super fast auto focusing assisted with that time of flight sensor and the accuracy on this thing. I had it, I, and the reason why I'm I'm impressed with this is just the level of focusing capabilities that it's able to do. Um, I asked my son yesterday to just go around in our backyard. I wasn't even going out in any fancy schmancy. I'm not asking him to do jumps or flips or whatever. I asked him just <laughs> do me a favor, run around a tree that we have in a backyard and I want you to do a circle and come back to me. And I fired up the, uh, the, the basically just continue shooting. I just kept shooting it the whole time. Out of all of the shots that I was about, I think I was able to get about 120 or so, maybe two or three were out of focus, but the rest, every single shot focused on his eyes, on his face. If he turned around, 
the autofocusing is ridiculously good on this camera. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's surprising because when I see these type of images, I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this on a smartphone. I can't, you know, that's something that is this thin, fits in my pocket, plays great games, has great audio, headphone jack, all of the things that I like, and it still has an amazing camera. Again, one thing you want to be aware of, though, is the... 90%, I would say like 95% of the experience in the cameras on this device are focused around the three, basically three different focal length cameras that we have on the back. We have a 16, a 24, and a 70 millimeter equivalent lens with face detection, autofocusing, as well as the ability of obviously, you know, basically a wide angle standard focal lens and a telephoto lens. Uh, but none of them are are focused in the front facing camera uh, department. We have a an eight megapixel shooter that does actually okay in for front facing selfie images. I haven't, I can't complain too much. Uh, it's okay. But I'm, I mean, it's it's, it's okay. again. It's, I, it's not, it, it, I if you're looking for, say it's, yeah. No, I mean, again, I feel like this is another example of Sony's. I don't want to use a word like hubris, but Sony's authority is. There's been so much more involvement from the Sony Alpha team that I could totally see. I I, I almost guarantee you that there was a Japanese boardroom meeting where the Sony Alpha team went. Well, we don't put mediocre cameras on Sony Alphas so that people can take say. pictures of themselves. So we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with that. We're we're only yeah, gonna focus on the rear cameras on this phone because those are the good cameras and people should use the good cameras. And then someone from the Xperia team was like, "But what about video calls?" And then the Alpha team guys like, "Then you will put on the bare minimum that you need for video calls. We're gonna focus on the rear camera." <laughs> <laughs> you can almost feel that in like I, how stark yeah, you, and utilitarian but you see it, you see it. And stuff like that. Absolutely. And you see <laughs> the exact focus level that they they put into the front facing camera. But it, again, it actually does it, I think that was a very good analogy to basically put it in. If you're buying a Sony camera an Alpha or even an RX7100, none of them have front facing cameras. You're not using and to take a selfie, you basically just flip the uh, you obviously use the main center, your good lens, and that's the one you're taking a picture with. Um and then surprisingly for me, as far as just taking selfies in, in my testing that I've been going with, uh, what I've been doing essentially is I set a three second shutter, uh, three second delay, obviously, just to be able to take a picture. And I flip it over, compose the shot. And surprisingly, with the autofocusing turned on, absolutely gorgeous, always spot on. Yeah. It, it catches the eye so quickly. Like there is barely any delay, it, it, either be it human or like, animal. It looks like the dystopian computer image recognition that you see from science fiction movies like it's like whoop, got the eye sitting at the dining room table eye. my daughter's like drawing stuff she's looking down at a piece of paper and i'm just like oh this is a kind of a cute shot and i want to send this to my mom and i pull up the sony photo pro app and as she's looking down it's like face eye and it's like instant, instant. you know it is like Crazy. when you've seen like amazing artificial intelligence or neural processing to try and, you know, analyze a scene and, oh, this is a pet, you know, like we've seen yeah, that yeah, on no, like a heads up display type of an experience kind of. Yeah. Uh, imagine that only way faster. And it absolutely like nails the the uh, the dimensions of the face and where the eye where is the situated. Eyes, exactly. And it's shocking. And, and again, the phone is like zick, and, and the, the focus is just there. So I even even had to like tap to focus on her face and then like try and get it to find nope. her face. It's just instant. It does the exact same experience on a pet. Very fast. And I think that's how they did it. They calibrated it for an for the, for a cat or a dog because they're a lot more jittery and moving or obviously in kids as well. They're generally never sitting around in one spot. But for me, I was super surprised when I was trying to take pictures of my cat. I've had always the hardest time because you know you think you have it in focus, you snap the shutter. And mm -hmm. of course, by the time you're snapping it, there's that delay in the image and the cat moved and it's a blur. Absolutely fantastic. So yeah, uh, but the, the me, only times I think it's fallen in. apart it has, has been on like action figures. So on on yeah. most of my toys, it does a good job. Like if the toy has any kind of generically human figure, uh, human features, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it, it actually does pretty well. The one that it um, I have a fallout bobblehead uh, vault boy uh, and it it it's hit or miss on that. It's kind of a quaint because all the eye is is just like a black oval. Um, it's an old, but yeah, so, with a white surrounding. So it's, it's and it generally looks oh, in the face. Oh, it does. It doesn't even have a white. Yeah, it's oh. just a black oval and an eyebrow. If you, re you remember that that um sort of uh government instruction manual look for for the Fallout uh, cartoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boy. exactly. Um, but but I would still say it's it's a nice maybe little cut to the haircut. Yeah, no, sixty forty. You know whether or not oh, it, right. it picks up the eye on on the on the Pip Boy. So even mm -hmm. there, that's. 
that's surprisingly good that it's able to tr kind of figure out, oh, that's a generally humanoid shape. It's probably what you want me to focus on. OK, let's give that a shot. Um, even even that's been surprisingly decent. True, true. And so with that, I, the the little bit of a kind of a discussion that we're going around with the camera, I did want to circle back a little bit with the so with the uh, the five G connectivity and and the uh, the For concern sure. that yeah. I think you're looking into. So um, based on the conversations that I've had with some of the Sony people I've talked to, and I've obviously some of the stuff I'm hearing, it doesn't look like. So the kind of a preset, a, pre, a precursor to this, uh, my unit is a, 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 a European model unit. So this is not a US based a variant version. And the reason I say this is because the box that I got actually says 5G on it. But I've mm -hmm. been testing out both T-Mobile and, and AT&T in the US and, and no 5G. Uh, the best I've been able to get as far as uh, you know, on speed tests that I've been able to run, and I've done it quite a few, it was 120, 117 megabits down and about 30 mm -hmm. up, which is not bad. I mean, considering 4G LTE is actually, that's that's average speeds for us in the US. Mm -hmm. I realize in different parts in, in the world that may be mediocre when it comes to 5G. Um, I mean, it's and blown away what I can get on 5G out here in the burbs. So you're, you're yeah. doing better. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it's it's still an improvement, and I really appreciate some of the some of the improvements that we've seen, at least with T-Mobile. And if you're on like Project Fire or so on, and they're actually using some of the T-Mobile backbone in connection, you'll you'll definitely enjoy it. Um, so for me, I didn't really see that as a big problem, at least with the way 5G is currently in my area. But you're right. In the one year to two year conversation with the Sprint merger with T-Mobile and T-Mobile starting to use more of the Sprint bands, the the spectrum that they were able to acquire with Sprint, I feel like this story may be of a concern for somebody considering getting this device. It's not going to be a bad experience. I don't think 4G LTE will be just basically disconnected in the next couple of years. Um, although I do I do believe with more people jumping on 5G, maybe the spectrum will get a little bit more release relief, and you'll have better performance. But still, a 2020 phone being released with a, a capable processor and chipset that includes a X55 modem that is 5G ready, and we know it supports the US bands and all of the connectivities, not to have that on. Um, I feel like at this point, the, the way the approach was done basically is that this isn't going to have it. I think it's going to be focused mostly on the European market, so 5G yeah. in Europe, but not in the US. Um, but I feel like where we saw before, um, we talked about it last time, I think on Tuesday as well. I think it's the Pro, the Xperia Pro, that's probably going to be maybe focusing more 5G conversations for us. Yeah, I, I mean, the the the, the concern um, is, again, it's just, does Sony have the ability to rekindle relationships with North American carriers? And, I, and I want where, them so much, yeah. I really want them to, but in a way, I also kind of don't want them to. I, I mean, like, I like how how... I mean, again, this is a very, a very crass word to use, but how like un uh, manipulated. Un a Sony I was going to say a small amount of bloatware. I mean, very, very minimal. Uh, I, I mean, mean, pull up your app drawer when you freshly, cleanly launch an Xperia, and it's only half of the screen. <laughs> no, exactly. No, no, no. It, it's it no joke. So it's exactly clean. how it is. It doesn't even go to a second page. It's so. It's so pretty. You know, it's just like. It, this phone can be anything I want it to be with no involvement or, uh, again, I, I'm trying not to use, uh, you know, crass language, but uh, no um, messing with this beautiful, stark, clean aesthetic. Um, it, but but that to that same token, you know, I, I feel like in the United States market, one of the reasons why our phone prices blew up more than the rest mm -hmm. of the world is you have to make three different versions of the phone. You know, yeah. I know people are complaining about an unlocked V60, but what would you get with an unlocked V60? You know, an unlocked OnePlus isn't isn't going to work on Verizon. It's 5G. No. It, Sprint's been devalued. And so Sprint's exactly. 5G bands are getting, you know, that spectrum is getting morphed into T-Mobile's network. It's not going to work on AT&T's 5G. So your unlocked V60 would essentially just be a T-Mobile V60. And that's the major problem is like those costs have to be built into each device that gets sold here. So the fact that you have to have a special variation of the OnePlus 8 UW just so that it can play on Verizon, you you pay for that when you're a T-Mobile consumer. You pay for that when you buy an unlocked phone. So that 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 it, it's like I kind of I really wish this 5G rollout were happening in a way where Sony could still just be 
one of those odd duck unlocked only march into the beat of their own drummer but i'll be yeah. curious to see if they can make the play for the xperia pro on verizon but i we all know that that's going to be sort of a, a very very low sales unit phone you know and sony it, doesn't have a very that. specific market i think it's going to be very a very specific market talking to only i think very much the even the pro level content creators because it's not even i mean it, it features some really nice specifications and i'm hoping it's going to feature obviously some of the same camera uh experiences that we're seeing here with the with the mark ii uh but obviously the only thing we know so far obviously uh, the main feature that i really like about it is the fact that it actually supports hdmi in to be used as an external monitor for other devices which to me it was the first thing that jumped in because of the you know the the a7 III that i have that i don't actually have an external monitor for uh, so right. it would work great as an as that type of connectivity, and if it does, obviously support the a millimeter wave connectivity for Verizon, the ability of doing straight up streams using it as an external monitor slash broadcast uh, tool to be able to get everything set up for you when you're trying to be in a mobile experience. So that's the stuff that I'm ex excited for on the Pro. But as far as the Xperia one for well, the Mach two for me with that last week, because I kind of jumped all over the place and skipped over <laughs> my impression. Um, I, I'm going to say that I'll, I'll, re, I'll reiterate the fact that it, by far the most surprising device to date, um, I am pleasantly intrigued and uh, surprised every time I, I use this device. The enjoyment level keeps getting better. Um, gaming it's, for me is it's a, really a, special. Lately, it, it is, it, but it's also kind of feeding into a whole bunch of different things that that are different for me now and, and where I am in, on the channel and where I'm doing now, where I was about a year ago. Um, I've been doing a lot more gaming uh, focused devices. So I, as you guys probably saw on the channel, I have, you know, the uh, Red Magic 5G, the, the Xiaomi Red Shark, uh, Black Shark 3, and now getting a Sony device that can hang in there with a lot of other devices similar to it. And it, has specifically gaming experience, a very good gaming experience from setting the processor level, the ability of including myself in the gameplay as I'm recording my video to be able mm -hmm. to broadcast. Very, very top notch. And of course, the heat suppression uh, uh, power control functionality or the HS power control, uh, the HS power control function uh, that's built in there. And then I feel like, as, as, as Juan and I said, uh, not a lot of people are talking about it. The, the Reddit, uh, um, the Reddit, the thread that I was talking to you guys about the Xperia uh, over on Reddit has been talking about the HS power control since the initial gaming video that I posted. And I felt that's why I wanted to do that video. And, um, you know, XDA, where, you know, I was working with XDA on providing mm -hmm. also some, uh, some confirmation as to, you know, as you guys know, with my, my affiliation with XDA as well. Um, so it was really nice that we're able to bring the story and and make it more more spoken or and talked about. Uh, the only other video I think up till yesterday was a Japanese version of a video that discussed the conversation and they did do a demo and that's why in my video I wanted to demo functions on how it worked for me as a gamer and i think with one he also noticed a lot of benefits as producing content as he does that's generally his thing he loves for producing sure. content off of his smartphone so uh, very happy with it um my time with the device for me at least is coming to somewhat of a pause i would say uh and uh, so i'm trying to shoot as much as i can get as much content on, off of the device by the end of this weekend so that i can kind of keep the story story going a little bit as i wait for my unit uh to come in um, one thing I did want to mention to everybody in the stream, if you're obviously probably already aware of, the pre-orders for the Sony, uh, for the Xperia 1 Mach 2 start on June 1st. Uh, it is an online retailer, in the U.S. at least, uh, actually I think everywhere, uh, online retail availability, Amazon, Best Buy, um, and I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think B&H was the first to post it. So we'll see some of those conversations there, and you're able to pick up a free pair of headphones uh, if you do the pre-order during the pre-order, uh, which these are the active noise cancellation headphones from Sony, not the sport one that just came out. This is actually yeah. the, the premium one that you want to get. Um, yeah, but, those XM3s are no joke. They're they're solid. Ab and absolutely. I, I picked them up refurbished back when they were like almost $299. So I was very happy back then and still happy with them today. Um, actually, mine kind of gets really badly scuffed on the top. <laughs> but um, <laughs> speaking so to that, to that story, I, I've been mostly focusing my experience of using this device. 
um, with the Xperia, the Camera Pro and the uh, Cinema Pro. I, I've stuck to both of those. I've used the front facing mostly just for kind of example. Like I said, I've taken a few selfies with it uh, when I want to take a picture with the family, mostly because of the composition. It's hard to focus. I, I don't have enough experience uh, using the back facing sensor when I have multiple subjects, unless I want to okay. jump into the wide angle lens. With a single subject, it's easy. I always dead center it, put it. I can see myself in the reflection in the lens. I'm pretty good. But then for when I have a somewhat of a, you know, my wife and my son with me, so it's been good. So I, I think at this point, what I would say, if you're thinking about an Xperia, if you, if you are intrigued about getting a premium experience when it comes down to enjoying content in 4K on a mobile device, um, I think the battery going up to 4,000 for me was definitely a big win because we wanted, I think 4,000 should have been the bare minimum to start with. I don't think 3,300, uh, the third, the 3,300 combo that we had last year felt like it was enough for a lot of people. 4,000 is carrying me through a day easy, for even sure. with a lot of, even in that honeymoon phase that I'm in right now. Um, wireless charging has been good, although I haven't been using it as much. It's great. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's something to do with my chargers. Uh, it sometimes will start and sometimes will not. Uh, it just flat out will say, sorry, it's wireless charging could not start. Please try again or something to that effect. Um, and also, I'm not sure. Oh, the other thing, obviously, is I think both of us are using pre-production hardware just to kind of keep uh, some of the, the Actually, conversation. I think yours is more finished than mine. Um, so it's you at least got sort of the, the, the sort of the Euro retail box kind of mine came brown box so mine is definitely a reviewer unit that i think is i think it's near retail ready but um okay. like for example it's it's not um it's not working with my google fi sim so i'm not sure if there's something else okay. happening in there but really i mean the main focus for mine was to to tackle the uh the, the performance and camera features and obviously the audio kit i mean the first video i had to get out was that audio review Oh, no. Yeah. And that's one other thing. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, um, I'll give you guys links in the description below, of course, to check out uh, some gadget guy. I think it's the some gadget guy over on Patreon, right? It's not mm -hmm. uh, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Hashtag some gadget guy. Um, of course, it's the same thing. Ha some ha some gadget guy over on Instagram, Twitter and YouTube as well. Actually, no, although on YouTube, it's one bag now, right? Yeah, well, it is. Can... But I mean, if you search for some gadget guy, that's... That. You're fine. Okay. you'll, yeah, you'll yeah. find me. You'll find it's hard. It's hard. It's you, hard you not can to see. find it. The the YouTube channel was was sort of built long before I I had finally finalized uh, the some gadget yeah. guy moniker. Yeah. Do you still have the so, some audio guy, or is that not being used as much? Oh, I I I I, I mean the channel still technically exists, but I muted all of the videos on that after YouTube pulled my monetization there too. So I like. Uh. So I mean, I was I, I had plenty of subs and I was still getting uh, decent traffic and they're like, you yeah, there hasn't been much activity here. So you don't make any money on these videos anymore. So I, I ganked all those videos, but some audio guys still technically exists on on Twitter. But he's he's a lot crankier. He gets mean. Um, some gadget guys <laughs> a lot, a lot more chill. So you, you should you maybe should just maybe one of these days I'll, I'll have some gadget guy come on uh, some audio guy come on. And uh, I just and just we'll, so you know, he gets he's very cantankerous. So um, maybe, you know, maybe I, I'll send I'm, him a bowl I'm, of ramen before the show. I, <laughs> <laughs> so well, that which, would actually calm his his demeanor, I'm sure. Speaking of which, I, again, this is partially the sorry, guys, uh, just kind of a side, small segue. Um, it, it's a really good ramen uh, restaurant in, in Sherman Oaks in, in California. And uh, so Yoke Ramen opened up. So they were open for a while. They closed for a couple for a week and a half. They opened up for one week, which was last week. They opened up. The hours improved. Everything was great. And then they closed again for the whole month of June. So uh, now it's I, I don't know steps. what's going on. They seem like they're going to come back. But uh, anyways, I, I was kind of bummed. I did get a chance to pick out to, to drive over there and pick out at least one good bowl of their uh, you know, deluxe veggie. And I enjoy that. And then after that, I see it on Instagram that they are closed for a month. So I don't know. I'm super, super envious. I, uh... um, <laughs> I, I mean, like, again, that's one of the few I haven't been able to scratch that itch. And we just moved to this new place and I have no idea like what's good around me. So I'm yeah. going to like. I'm planning a, like I might just need to trek down to City of Industry because I know oh, where my favorite all ramen way, place yeah. is all the way down there. I, I just I don't know what to, I don't want to just experiment, you know, like I don't want to have that craving for really good ramen and find a place that's just uh, I want something I, that's going to really scratch. It, it's that hard. Edge. Ramen is such a 
it's it's it's, it's you have to experience it and it's hard to buy it based on sight unseen kind of thing like mm -hmm. you have to try it out i even tried ramen hero this online um northern california mail kind of like a, a subscription based thing that you can get ramen from them and um <laughs> It's okay. It's not the same. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's not the same as right. Yolk for me as a vegetarian ramen uh, place has always it's been really nice. But and I, I just I wanted to kind of call so you know just have that little quick because every time we talk, as soon as we hang up or we stop talking, it comes back to me. I'm like I forgot to tell him about the place. So hopefully <laughs> in July we'll uh, if the way depending it's how things date. are. It is. We'll, we need to. We need to do another ramen um, mukbang, whatever that thing I've been saying. We just For need to do real. something and go check them out and support the place. Um, but let's let's start looking at some of the questions. I think we have some people in in the in the chat that have been yeah 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 and again and, and so thank thank you guys for for kind of chipping in there. I know like TK and I are both very easily tangented kinds of YouTubers, but yes, um, we we did want to get to some of these comments. I've been seeing a bunch that have been uh, stuff we definitely want to touch on. Definitely, and I do want to write real quick say thank you very much to Gary. Oh, Gary, the Gary, Gary as the support man. Oh, in a, a, a super chat right there, absolute beast um, of a, of a supporter, and uh, definitely I, always there in every single chat, every single conversation we've had, and I appreciate having him with us here, obviously as usual, as well as everybody else in the comments. But thank you very much, uh, Gary, and uh, hope you're doing well. I hope the family's doing good, and I hope everybody in the comments obviously are doing okay, and um, they're they're taking care of themselves, and they're trying to stay healthy and you know mentally physically there's a whole bunch of things going on in the world right now and it's we're we're, we're having to basically deal with it uh, even though it feels like on our own but sometimes we're also doing it together kind of you know and this is what the, hopefully this show is doing for you guys as well um i think i saw some questions in there talking about some of the other options that we've seen um i think the, the, you know camera experience uh some people are also talking about the fact i mean can you talk a little bit more about the price why is it so expensive and so on at the end of the day, I feel like if we had to kind of, not that I want to justify the price for Sony, that's not my position. I don't work for Sony and this is not a, uh, a conversation I can say on their behalf. But from my perspective, if I was to consider purchasing this device, if I was thinking about buying a device that is a smartphone, as well as being basically somewhat of a prosumer, it, 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 not necessarily a prosumer camera, but it's a camera that obviously is learning from the Sony Alpha, which I personally also enjoy. I feel like if, and I think we made that comment also on Tuesday, is if I if I was okay to go out into a B&H or go into Best Buy or to Amazon and pay $1,000 for an RX7100, which is basically Sony's small form factor, what used to be basically their standard vlogging style camera, uh, it essentially had a flip uh, display, it incorporated the audio input now with the Mach 7. And then for me, I had no problem dropping $1,000 when that came out because I knew what I was getting. I was getting a Sony mm -hmm. type of optics, Sony science as far as the color representation, uh, the speediness, the performance, the the mechanics that I can always depend on. I turn it on and I know exactly what I'm gonna get out of it. I don't feel like it's a problem for me to say that you know if a phone comes out for about a thousand, twelve hundred dollars for this grade level of a camera experience, and I'm hoping we're able to convey that story in both the videos that we're doing on our channels, both myself and Juan, and also some of the other creators. I don't think the price is too high. I don't think they're trying to compete with the with the with the S20 Ultra, with the S20 Plus. They're not trying to. Sony is not trying to jump in and say, "This is how much better I am than X." You know, insert device here. That's not the discussion. Yeah. Um, no. I mean, it's just just to kind of to 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 join that. Um, I think we all should have a pretty fair understanding that at around four hundred dollars, there is diminishing returns if we're just looking at quality um a sony experience is a singular experience so if you're shopping yep. a mid-ranger phone then the xperia 10 is for you that's that's your sony experience at around 400 dollars um so sony again i like this brand this label has always been you know a fun foil or a fun controversial brand you know they, they don't mm -hmm. see where there's the the uh, why anyone should pay less than the premium that they command for the sony label you know the playstation exactly. you, let's not forget the playstation 3 launch especially you should want to save up for your sony products Th this is an honor <laughs> to you exactly. and to sony to own a premium <laughs> device that you worked hard uh to save up for that that's always kind of been coded into their to their setup here but i feel like Sony is probably in a similar position, but with more bravado, 
that mm -hmm. Google was with the Pixel 4. I think Google looked at the iPhone and said, the iPhone 11 Pro is going to be $999. So how can we slightly best the iPhone 11 Pro mm -hmm. and, and, but still say that our products demand or command a premium? And Sony's in the same boat. What does an iPhone 11 Pro Max cost? $1,250 once you bump up the storage. So yep. the Mark II is going to be $50 cheaper for 256 gig of storage. Done. Which is, it is double what we had last year with the Mach 1. The Mach 1 was a max of 128. But, but I mean, so like, seriously, break, break down the spec sheet. You've got the interpolated UHD display, HDR10 Plus, with amazing creator modes so that you can fine tune the display like a professionally calibrated mo uh, monitor. You've got the headphone jack. You've got better uh, face pointing stereo speakers. You've got expandable storage. It starts with 256 gig of storage. You've got a much larger main camera sensor on the back of that phone. You have to compromise on the selfie shooter, but they don't care about the selfie shooter. I mean, like you, you break it down point by point by point by point. And Sony's looking at an iPhone 11 Pro Max. And I feel that $50 window between an iPhone 11 Pro Max lines up pretty well against what the Xperia, what, what the Mark II offers as an LTE only device. Um, yes, but, but but again, well, it's, so, it's, so it's not the iPhone just... at this point. The 11 Pro Max is also LTE, so it's not. Well, but I'll... yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like again, if we're comparing oranges to oranges in the market right now, MSRP, that's what these products cost. The reality of that is obviously a lot more complicated when we look at how fast prices fall on some Android phones, how other yeah. Android phones seem to retain their value or actually become more expensive. Look at you know for all these all these nerds. Uh, besmirching the OnePlus 8 Pro, that phone is sold out and it's going for a lot more secondhand because people can't get their hands on them. That OnePlus Absolutely. can't make them fast enough. So, And we'll, and we'll this talk a little bit more is, about the uh, OnePlus 8 Pro in a little bit. Yes. Yeah, this, this market is really complicated, but I feel Sony's, the, the, the biggest deficit to Sony is very similar to, my, in my opinion, to the problem with LG. They don't have the, the, the best North American messaging. And I feel yeah. like if you're in Japan, you get it. This yep. is what Sony does. This is who Sony is. And this is why I, I rock a Sony. Um, and maybe even a little bit more so in Europe. But here in, in the United States and Canada, you know, their, their, their PR, their PR uh, pre uh, presence is, mm -hmm. is, is a lot smaller. So this story doesn't get out. The Sony story isn't delivered in the same way that like Samsung's story is inescapable. I, and I think that's that's one of the main benefits of the fact that we're able to be part of that conversation. And I think that's why I appreciate being, um, I want to say, part of the the uh, wave one, first first people, first group, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, uh, of of being able to talk about the device. And um, and of course, so for me, at the end of the day, that's that's kind of like the best way to describe conversation when it comes to price. You have to really understand and look at what you're getting and what's coming into the actual device and the type of tech that you're looking in. And it is very clear that Sony is listening to their consumers and they are trying to do things the right way, not just doing them right. And what I mean by it's like, you know, it's not like because people wanted a headphone jack, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll throw that in. No, they put it in and they put in a DAC, a good quality DAC behind it. It doesn't beat the V60, but it's still better quality audio. And they also include a headphone, a pair of headphones in the, in the box so that you're able to enjoy that content right out of the box. So those things, little things like that to me. Yeah. But again, Just, it's also Sony, so they weren't going to step on their own Walkman sales. <laughs> no, no, but that's what it is. It's, right? it's literally like the Walkman team, the Sony Alpha team came in and say, and then, of course, there's the gaming from the PlayStation side that said, hold on a second. Let me tell you what we need to do here to make this closer to what we do. And they did that. That Those are the things that you have to appreciate. Uh, and I think it's partially part of, the, part of the culture is that they don't do things just for the sake of doing them. They do them right, and they do them right by their consumers because that's how you build a brand loyalty, and that's how you build the appreciation for that tech. So for me, um, it, it, from where I am right now, it's a definite w uh, buy. I'm personally going to be standing in line on, on Monday morning. I think it was like 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I will be putting in my pre-order for the Sony Um it's it's especially the purple one, not, not oh, nothing against the color that. one. I like the purple one. It I looks want that like, color so, so bad. 
it is so hard. this one is so hard to, for, uh, to to take pictures of. I mean, seriously, it's so yeah. shiny and it's so you know the the contrast on it is so bad. You have to kind of catch it with a light reflection just so that you can get the camera optics in there. Yeah, but either way. Purple one will be the one I'll put in. I'm putting in my my money on, and I think if you guys are interested as well, uh, again, starting Monday morning, uh, and it's available information. It will be also available on both, uh, basically most retailers. But I think B and H is the only one that has the landing page for it now. Um, so that was mostly what I wanted to kind of cover as as far as this. I think the we still have a few more videos coming on. I think I need to do. Um, I'm not sure if I'm able to do a full review on it yet. What I feel like I'll probably end up doing is just still doing more focused features on yeah. specifically what's going on with the device. No, this is definitely uh, fun. I feel like we need to carve it up into pieces, not... Yeah. Again, it's I, I feel like the, the story is lost if you try and do a 30-minute, let's cover everything review. It doesn't and exactly, seem and right. that's what happens as a device like this, or even with the V60. You need to basically break out the different features for it, and I feel like you know the the, the viewers will appreciate it more, and they'll understand more what's going on with the story, and hopefully make a better purchasing decision if they're considering getting a yeah. uh, you know a brand new Xperia but in 2020. I, I, I completely agree with you there. I, I feel like this is a very strong buy recommendation, mm -hmm. if we're being very honest and and a little critical about what people need or want because there's a lot of this experience that you could pick up on in xperia 5. there's a That's lot true. of this experience you could pick up on in xperia 10. there there is a there's a rarefied consumer who is looking at what a beast of a phone might offer and again, I mean, I've seen some of the criticisms, you know, like, oh, well, they should have at least done 90 hertz. And it's a UHD resolution display. They with forget it's incredible, UHD. Yeah. But again, it's, it's, you know, it's the difference between a graphics monitor for professional graphics work and a gaming monitor with an ultra fast yeah. refresh. But Sony still is doing a software interpolated higher refresh setting. And it does yeah. help. It's not as good as a true 90 hertz. But exactly. show me anyone else who can do UHD resolution with any kind of more responsive um, uh, screen interpolation for that for that uh, frame rate or for I mean for that refresh rate. So yeah. so again, it's not just oh well ninety hertz. This is I, again I mean, we showed it in one of our live streams. The tools you get to calibrate the color tone and white balance are unlike anything I've seen on any other phone. So this is not refresh rate to refresh rate. This is graphics professional display that's designed to pair with a Sony Alpha camera against a really awesome high quality gaming monitor. And those are two different conversations. So so that's I mean, like you have to you have to keep that kind of nuance in mind when when you're trying to do comparisons. It's not just what are the hertz? This one has more hertz, so it's the better one because the number is bigger. Like because that, that is more. the most. Yeah, because this one hurts more. <laughs> do you even hurts, bro? How hurts bad does right it hurts, now? man? How how do you hurts? Um, that that that. I mean, like, I, I and and I don't mean to be as antagonistic, straw manning other content creators, but like, if they stop there, you have an incomplete comparison of what these phones are trying to accomplish. And, and that's, the, I think, the, the, the biggest sadness about a phone like the V60 or a phone like the Xperia 1 is it takes more energy. It takes more effort. But when you actually extend that effort and dig into all of these nooks and crannies, man, you're rewarded. Absolutely. You, you, yeah. you, you have such a better option there and a better conversation. And the consumer out there who might care about one feature versus another that that's going to mean something to them as opposed to Snapdragon 865. I can import a Xiaomi and it's going to be half the price. Like, okay, cool. Do that. Do that. Exactly. Why are you yeah. on this video of the Xperia? If you're not going to listen to what the Xperia actually has to offer, if all you care about is the Snapdragon 865, go do that, go import that phone. But if you want to talk about carrier bands and you want to talk about graphics work and you want to talk about pro level camera features, and you want to talk about gaming and you want to talk about a different philosophy for gaming and you want to talk about battery longevity and power control. Well, then this is a this is a bigger conversation, isn't it? Snapdragon 865 is 
almost not relevant. <laughs> it's a <laughs> small conversation. It, it's an important piece of the story, but it's still a piece of it, not the whole story. And I think that's what we want people to realize. It truly is a, a component that, well, at least in 2020, everybody and every device coming out lately, at least uh, that can has been featuring the 865. And it's a great processor. It does a lot of for improving the ability for us to get 5G, the ability for us to get higher refresh rates. And I don't, I'm not, I don't want to dismiss the, the high refresh rate uh, story, but you have to understand the combination of things that you have on the Xperia 1, on the Mach 2. And the fact that, and I, I didn't want to forget the question, I think that somebody asked before, I said, what, what, are the, what are your thoughts as far as the experience with the display on the Mach 1 and the Mach 2? From my understanding, at least the way I look at them realistically, they, they're pretty much identical. They're, they're for the most part, the same resolution, um, same 10 bit uh, HDR uh, as far as the, the, the color depth, the creator mode for the most part is the same. The only difference that I'm noticing different here is the control, the calibration function that we have built into the Mach 2 mm -hmm. is that we're able to actually go a lot more deeper into the setup as far as white balancing in here, which yeah, it, was it, it looks like some people. Sorry, I'm sorry. Not, not to interrupt. I, th I thought you were kind of closing again. Yeah, yeah. video streaming conversations. Right. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't yeah, mean to yeah, step yeah. on that as aggressively as I did. But it seems like what we're getting here, there was a very limited edition Xperia One Mark One that was called a Pro, and it was Japan mm -hmm. only. And it seems like we inherited some of those features. And the reason why it was okay. called a Pro was because it was a very select batch of panels uh, of phone screens that were chosen for that phone. And we got those additional color calibration tools that now are just built into the Mark II. So again, it's like we can already see the evolution too. There was the Xperia 1. There was an offshoot limited edition of the Xperia 1. And now we're seeing those features carry over into the Mark II. Absolutely. And and I also, there, there's another comment here also talking about the uh, the DualShock 4 that we have now with the new vibration that we have in the system. It definitely improved. I. It, it's very unique. That's also maybe something that we can also talk about. The fact is, what other device enables you to actually have a basically the ability of feeling those experiences in the movies? It's not just listening mm -hmm. to them. It's not just being able to see them, but actually have your phone vibrate as a, you know an accident or a car crash happens or something is going on in the movie. So to me, and also obviously set the intensity in the video as you're going through yeah. this. This isn't just a preset. You know, one just one vibration for everything. No, you can intensify it to the highest level. Um, and I also feel like that what it also does is it boosts the audio as well once you turn it on when it's off. So that's there's a little bit of a an audio processing done there when you turn on the uh, the DualShock. Uh, but it's very unique, very nice. Again, adds to the experience. It carries over from what we had last year. But very few devices, even if I, I can't even remember another device that uses it as natively as the way we see it with the Sony. So this is purely Sony controller built in into a smartphone. So like <laughs> think of like you know DualShock. That's Sony's stuff. Again, the, the the PS the PlayStation team came over, had a conversation. They said, "Look, you got to do this so people can understand that we're in this." <laughs> and then the Alpha come in and says, "Look, don't worry about the front facing camera. Let me give you the best experience on the back facing sensors, and let's talk about how we can make this work." And of course, the uh, the, the the you know the, the display division, and of course, in enjoying the content there. And that's really one of the reasons why I got so excited about it. It's it's not the looks necessarily; it's iconic, but it is definitely there. It's the the level of precision that you could see the heritage, you could see yeah. all those years, all of those improvements sure. in the Walkman experience. But for that, but again, sorry, yeah, yeah that, that was me. I, I, was no, I was, I was, I, I think I was kind of again feeling you. Like, uh, you know, the the Xperia One has definitely left an impression, um, and it's been a refreshing phone to cover because it is, it is different. I mean, you know, like for all of these for all these conversations that we have about competition, Xperia 1 Mark II, LG V60, the One Pluses, we're, 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 um, we're, we're, we're trying to find different solutions for different consumers. And that means we should have a different collection of features and specs at different price points. You know, the conversation gets a little, a little sticky with Sony being a premium brand and not apologizing for being a premium brand. But, but, it's just so refreshing to have something else on my table that isn't trying to be a Samsung or an iPhone clone. And even just that, I mean, I feel deserves its own little uh, piece of recognition in, in 2020 
for how weird this market is. But I mean, like, uh, we, we did want to spend some time also kind of digging through a few of our other experiences and uh, the other devices on our, our test benches and what else we've Definitely. got going on. For, I, I did for want to talk a little bit about basically the biggest announcement that we've seen, at, at least for me in gaming again. I don't know why I'm becoming more of a gaming, more specifically focused Do on it, gaming. Do it, man, but I'm lean not. into it because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback on your gaming stuff so I don't have to turn my gaming into part of my hey man job. i think you back on your audio uh, your audio deep dive because <laughs> i just i don't have the history built in there you have the metric you have the information it's it's something that you're able to point to but um what i wanted to talk a little bit about this time is also the fact that uh the biggest thing especially if you're a fortnite you enjoy playing fortnite you like playing games uh, on mobile devices and changing obviously we're shifting the story a little bit over on uh to android and when it comes to basically playing fortnite on android um, in the recent, I think within the last few weeks or so, we noticed that uh, Fortnite or Epic Games decided to basically shift back the refresh rate on most their devices, Android specific, to 30 frames per second due to compatibility issues. So if you've been mm -hmm. playing the game for some time where you may have had 60 frames per second at one point, everybody went back and it could default to 30 frames per second regardless of how fast your display, your processor, it didn't matter. It was a default setting and it was due to compatibility issue. They did have some issues with devices. But then this week, this guy, the, well, not just this guy, actually. I think both. The uh, the OnePlus 8 series of devices received a super boost, of, or in my opinion, a boost in performance. Um, now, I noticed this feature back when we first got our units uh, initially that it was saying 90 hertz or 90 frames per mm -hmm. second on the OnePlus 8, but it didn't feel like it was working. It was, for some reason, it was like an early switch that was turned on because of our you know pre-production devices or so on. But now it's official. Um, 90 hertz refresh rate supported on both the OnePlus 8, which actually supports at a maximum resolution, uh, refresh rate is 90 hertz. And of course, uh, the ability of jumping into basically uh, on the OnePlus 8 Pro, which supports 120 hertz at the same level, 90 hertz refresh rate. And it is actually present. Let's go ahead and switch over to the, of course, top down camera. Uh, let me go ahead and switch over here and see if I can just bring this over one second, Juan. And we can go Do into it. the settings tab, and you can definitely see in here, we're actually going to let it focus for a second. So 60 frames per second, but we actually now have the ability of jumping in and going over to 120. So let me go ahead and turn it on for us right there. Uh, oh, no, sorry, not 120. I, like, I keep saying 120. It's the 90 frames. So you can see it right there. It's actually present. If it can focus on me. So 90 hertz refresh rate on the OnePlus. This is the OnePlus 8 Pro, and it is exactly the same on the OnePlus 8. Uh, Really excited that for any kind of, uh, if you're an Android, uh, obviously playing games on Android is definitely very nice. But if you're a fan of Fortnite and you love playing games and you want to be able to enjoy high refresh rate, 90 frames per second is by far the fastest you can get. And it is faster than even some of the experiences that people can get on their PCs. Most monitors are 60 <laughs> frames per second unless you're playing like 120, 100, 100 hertz. This is exciting. This is big. But as Juan was saying, it's hard to get this phone. The phone is, is literally like out anywhere you want to get it. But I like the fact that it's on both the 8 and the 8 Pro. So it also makes it a, a much better story to kind of bring in the, the benefit, the features that you're able to get with a 90 hertz display on the OnePlus 8 uh, that you're able to enjoy, again, gaming to this level that high natively easily all you have to do is just now, have you found that there was watch. any issue that because again it seems like when you really crank it that high um it you're, you're going to be running the phone in a very aggressive fashion and doesn't it also sort of detune the graphics settings it does a little bit so it, it they're they're sacrificing the quality a little bit to be able to go with that higher refresh rate and i think that's just the initial release for it I haven't had enough time to be able to to do heavy gaming on this, to be able to see how the performance, is there truly a big difference in the sense that we're going to be pushing the device at 90 frames per second as opposed to where in the past, if you played this game on, on an OnePlus 8 or OnePlus 8 Pro, the default uh, refresh rate was 30 frames per second, even if you had right. your device set at 120. So you weren't really using as much power and the device wasn't having to push as many pixels and refreshing the display as often. So little bit more i'll be putting out a video about this on monday trying to basically give my kind of conclusion conversation as to how does this work and is it a benefit should you play 90 hertz uh, the game on 90 hertz or should you basically you know stick to try to keep it at what we had before because you can tune it from 90 60 30. it's not stuck to 90 that's the maximum that you're able to go so there has to be somewhat of a balance but um, the overall initial impression, very happy. The responsiveness here, very good. Um, didn't really see a big difference between both the 8 and Pro, mostly because of 
it is, you know, they're both capable of doing 90. Uh, I would have loved to see more, but you could definitely see there's more overhead room for them to jump more um, yeah. on the 8 Pro if if they choose to go to, because we mean, haven't the, seen anything that does that. The more I've been looking into this, I, I really hope by maybe the end of next year um, for, for smartphones is that we can start to... Uh, we we can we can start to incorporate things like uh, like Nvidia's DLSS, you know that that sort oh, of sub sampling yes, yes, that they do yes, for exactly. for a compressed version of uh, of a game, so that you can you can maximize things like lighting effects. I really feel like that that needs to be the next step for mobile, um, as these titles have actually grown to be pretty uh, significant players, like uh, COD Mobile, uh, Fortnite, PUBG. Um, these are very demanding titles on games, and I feel like uh, some next generation style of compression, image compression, is probably going to be the next fit for our uh, for our mobile handsets. Uh, you know, like again, you want fantasy exploration with the amazing lighting effects and something like Children, uh, a Sky, mm -hmm. Children of the Light. Um, I'd be willing to compromise some of the some some of the resolution mm -hmm. to get that amazing lighting depth um uh, rendering effects in in the game as well that real time rendering so so I, I feel like we're right on the edge of right now we're still brute forcing everything with this you know gpu you know cpu combination and then maybe into next year we'll start playing with some smarter ways to manipulate image data and I think it, it also has to come with the type of titles that we're also looking into right now. I mean, I think I can definitely see something more of like a Final Fantasy enjoy, it definitely benefiting more from a DLSS type of a technology over what we see with Fortnite, mostly because of the the experience that you're getting with Fortnite. I don't think they're trying to go with high quality graphics. That's not their. Well, but that's that's why again, it's like um, you know, again, why why I mentioned DLSS specifically was. Yeah. We were getting faster frame rates on a 20, 2080 super with DLSS mm -hmm. and real-time ray tracing than with yeah. real-time ray tracing disabled. So again, oh. if you want the you know the the best of both worlds, you want that high quality image. I mean mm -hmm. I know Fortnite isn't really built on that, but it's still I mean it could contribute to to the immersion of playing it, that game. What, what I feel like but then also the, maintaining yeah. an even faster frame rate than what you would have just by brute force just going straight through the GPU without this kind of smart image compression. Um, it seems to me that that's actually more the future and uh, consoles are probably going to be piggybacking on very similar styles yeah. of, of data compression. I think our phones are the next frontier. You know, the, we, what we want to talk about gaming phones. Well, the next thing that's really going to light us up is PC quality gaming. We on can do that. We can do that on mobile if if we're smarter about how we're squishing some of this image so data down. Some of that right now isn't is there. If you so if you I don't know if you've had a chance to play with GeForce now yet, or if you guys have had mm -hmm. a chance to play with some of those. Nvidia has had has have had basically the ability of incorporating some of the DLSS and our, and basically just the improvements that we see on desktop experience type games when we're playing them on our mobile device. The only thing though is it's it's basically being rendered and most of the horsepower isn't really done on your smartphone. Your smartphone is a being more of a controller, like a remote control access to it. So um, I do appreciate having that type of technology. Ray tracing, DLSS, are, those are things that we want to be able to enjoy on our content, well, in the games, on mobile. Uh, but mm. I feel like that's basically what we have right now that we're still uh, challenged with. We're making improvements. We're seeing good, good game, good titles. Uh, for me, I can't say enough about PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile. Those are by far for me. The, the the improvements that we've seen over the years, the the gameplay in there, just the responsiveness of the device, the audio experience for me, uh, the fact that you know, again, I'm not trying to say that this is a comparison between this, you know, the eight Pro and the Xperia One Mark Two or Mark Two, um, but having a headphone jack with a zero latency is is a big factor. It's a big game factor for me as a gamer. That's something I look for. Um, the, right. the, the, the graphics upscaling that we saw with the Mark II is definitely really nice. It's present. But as I think Juan was mentioning before, it's not exactly a one for one for a 90 hertz, true 90 hertz display. There is a difference in there. Upscaling, you can definitely see how smooth it is. But um, the fact that we do have those type of improvements on the OnePlus 8 and the 8 Pro, if you were considering getting those devices, definitely this is going to be an extra feature that you can think of. Uh, the 8 starts at 699. I think it's a great deal to start thinking about it. A 90 hertz refresh rate uh, Fortnite mobile uh, game uh, phone that offers you some of the latest specs, fastest internal storage, and the best experience you can get on mobile right now for Fortnite.
that's just a great conversation to have any way you look at it. Um, and of course, it'll perform the exact same with the best possible one for PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile. I think it's 60 frames per second. I think that's where we're seeing some of the uh, limitations there. I'm still mm -hmm. waiting on PUBG 90 frames per second that we saw and we uh, we, we heard about last year um, at the uh, in, at the um, Qualcomm Summit. That was one of their biggest announcements that they talked about is the improvements with the graphics and the actual lighting and the effects that we're able to get within PUBG Mobile. But we haven't seen mm -hmm. that yet. So definitely keep an eye out. I'm hoping OnePlus will be part of that conversation uh, because they obviously support 90 hertz and above. But um, I do want to say, um, I, I, I have to want to say this. If this person is the person I think they are, hello, <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Um, I, I I don't know that we should be feeding any trolls because I'm not sure that that's yeah really no kind of and that's why I didn't say the account, name uh, so. <laughs> that was mostly what I wanted to say but at the end of the day it would be hilarious like, if 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 a head it, of state for a, a country was actually watching our live stream that would be pretty awesome I do want to say though by far of all the other streams that you and I have been on or even the ones I've done by myself or even with Josh, um, we have over 220 people in the stream. I'm like, yeah. wow. Welcome. Well, you put, you put Xperia 1 Mark II and Fortnite in the title of a video. So I feel like we're doing pretty good. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. It, it, it was intentional. I know. I, uh, but no, and we are covering, obviously, this isn't, it, it's not clickbait by any means. It's truly things that we are passionate about. Um, the other thing I did want to also talk about today with you, which I don't know if you've had a chance to play with, um, mm -hmm. I actually finally had a chance to get an egg, um, specifically oh, a Google an egg. egg. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Google Pixel Buds 2 egg. Um, I haven't gotten my hands on them. I uh, I have been so swamped that I, I haven't swung around to trying to I, pick them up just yet. I tried so, picking them up, and it took a, a month while. almost for them to ship. Yeah. yeah, they sold out. Like The moment people started even making quick videos on them or whatever, and um, they were released in small quantities. They're only available in white. Um, and I was able to pick it up through Verizon. I think maybe that also attributed why it took me a longer. Uh, Verizon was running a deal where if you bought the Pixel Buds to with a couple of accessories, it was on slick deals. I forgot when, what time they was released. Uh, but the whole bundle was like $150, including tax shipped, where if you were just going to buy them straight by themselves through uh, like, you know, Google or I think Best Buy, it was 200 bucks for the Pixel Buds alone. So mm -hmm. I couldn't pass on that deal. I mean, obviously, I want to be able to save some money. I'm buying it with my own money anyways. Um, but unfortunately, which ends up basically making me uh, very, very, very late to that conversation. But I feel like there's still a space for it. There's still a conversation to be had when it comes to the Pixel Buds 2. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very, very surprised. I'm very pleasantly surprised uh, with the initial impressions and the experience I'm getting with these very happy I, I feel um, like they had a lot of ground to catch up on the pixel buds one so i would have been very surprised if yeah they didn't take this gen 2 a lot more seriously than they took that first and next and, strap and and it shows buds. and it shows yeah. and that's that's all i have to say um i don't think in my personal experience that they beat my sony's that think the sony's are still definitely my favorite when it comes to active noise cancellation type of headphones because mm -hmm. these don't feature that um, there was also a little bit of a concern for me on my end with it comes to battery life. It, it doesn't really have a very long battery life, but I will say touch response on the headphones on the on the Pixel Buds 2 for me has been absolutely fantastic. And nice. I'm talking from the sense that the moment I touch it, it registers it. There's no I touch and wait. Touch registers um, the assistant response. Like I literally touch it automatically tells me all my notifications. Uh, I answer it and I hear things very clearly. Uh, audio playback has been really good. No built-in EQ, kind of like Sony's uh, adaptive stuff, but I'm able right. to uh, offset some of my experience with the Dolby Atmos uh, configuration that, that we have there in, this, in the device. Um, so really looking forward to talking a little bit more about these, um, as well as the fact that I didn't get a chance to mention, but the I got the, uh, and I think you played with these, right? The, the mm -hmm. Soundforge? Soundcore, yeah. The Soundcore. I don't know why I said Soundforge. <laughs> Wrong story. Uh, so these good have also software. been one of my, it, it's, it's great software, but uh, great headphones. Um, also feature wireless charging. Uh, they're also in the in the office trying to get a, get some more accessories videos put out for people to enjoy their content. If you don't want to use wired headphones, of course. Um, I do want to real quick acknowledge uh, Aditya as usual. Thank you very much for the support as usual with the super chat. Love the stream, everyone. Uh, great chat. Like always, hit that like button. It helps the video and it helps this channel grow long term. Of course. Um, 
I cannot say enough about the support between you and and I'm talking obviously to you know to you Juan and your the community that's around you, oh, um, you. in Discord on Twitter, um, you know direct messages and so on. Everybody else is is just a great great uh, team. It's to this is a good part. crew. We have it we is, have a it good is. crew. So I'm I'm, I'm, I'm very happy and, to be and, a and part I of love, it. <laughs> I love how they are welcoming and they're open to talk about many different things. And that's one thing that you love. I love about our streams is. We can start the conversation with one one minute talking about an iPhone to jumping over to a V60 to an RG phone, and the camp works with us, right? It's not a the oh one or the other. You're able to talk, you know, all sorts of tech. Um, so, with that being said, I feel like where we are this week, the end of May, with the fact that there is maybe a couple of more devices, because I think you alluded to that in the beginning of the year. We're talking about basically mm -hmm. the early, the beginning of the year's conversation of you know what are the devices that are out. The only ones, the only things that I can think of that haven't been released yet. I think there's a couple of devices, possibly that One Plus X. We heard rumors about that. There's possibly I'm hoping to see it. one. Yeah, and I'm hoping to see that one very, very soon. Um, also, as a small side note, I don't know if anybody saw that uh, the Android 11 launch event on the third, uh, which was supposed to happen next week, sadly did get postponed. So there will yeah. not, well, there will not be a beta announcement or a launch of the beta of Android 11 or slash Android R, depending if you want to call it R. I think. Not that, not that it's going to be R. It's probably going to be 11. Um, we don't have any word yet as far as when that delay is going to be going to, but it is essentially refer referring to um, the times that we're in, the current situations that are going on, the things that are in the in the news, and they felt like they it wasn't the right time for Android to celebrate Android 11 with the launch of the beta, and they will wait a little bit longer to make it available. So hopefully, maybe a week or so worth of delay, but we'll see how things go. Um, so that was partially also that was a big thing. I, I just saw that, like, was it last night or the day before? And it was just very minor things. Um, but the reason why I mentioned that is because we also heard that the, the, there was a delay for the Pixel 4a release. So that was something that was also delayed a little bit because of the current situation. So yeah, I feel like we have a good, we have a good set of devices between the two of us. Um, and, and, we and, have um, too many. We have too I, many devices between the two of us. I, I try. I'm trying to word it in a in a good way. I realize that we have too many. Um, and I think Juan and I talked I also about the fact that a phone a month. I have six phones on my desk right now that are all in various stages of reviewership. Like I, I haven't finished my TCL10. I haven't finished the proper review on the One Pluses. Um, I just got another budget phone that I'm going to be excited to talk about. I mean, like. There's a lot. And we know on the horizon some kind of Google announcement or Pixel announcement, even with delays. Mm -hmm. An iPhone 12, maybe? The Absolutely. Galaxy yeah, yeah. Note? Probably. It, it's, it's, hey, oh, I, whether or not we might see some international traffic for an LG Velvet, you know, just because they've yeah, announced it, LG doesn't mean exactly. LG is ever going to tell Daniel us when the, it's really uh, going to show. Danielle, I think in the, in the comments was talking about, you know, what happened with the LG Velvet and, uh, and how things are going, but yeah, no, I, I, I want to see, so we did see, I think I saw somewhere that the Velvet is going to be released in the UK, um, with, if, with, uh, somewhat of a, uh, 799, I think if I want, I think six, 749 or 799. For the mm -hmm. price point with a 765 so it it looks like it's going to the european market but it doesn't look like it's coming to the us or at least i haven't heard much on the us front so no. uh, with that being said i think the i would say the, the series of devices that we've seen have a general theme right everybody is using the 865 everybody that can is activating the x55 modem and they're using 5g with it depending on different combination which for the most part kind of leveled the game field somewhat when it came to performance i'm not talking cameras uh, yeah. because in the past that was always something that you know um that they kind of became a differentiator right you had either you know the camp that was able to go to the flagship processor or the one that stuck more with the mid-range processor with the six series of devices or even the seven series and now mm -hmm. we're seeing more pe more companies specifically nubia releasing the 5g with a 144 hertz display again very unique to them very gaming centric um I would say the cameras are okay. They're not really the focus of the device. If you're buying a, a Red Magic 5G, it, you're buying it specifically for the gaming capabilities. You're buying it because mm. this is a gaming phone. Um, but you know, the, the fact of the matter is, high refresh rate is becoming a standard. 
A lot of us are starting to consider that. Is it really a feature that a lot of us should be really focusing on? That the fact that my phone can do 120 hertz or it can do 90 hertz or should be me more comfortable and enjoy more content on devices that can do 60 hertz at a very good experience. I felt like LG gave us a really good case in the C, uh, this yeah. year with the 60 where you had more of a consistent FPS across the UI, the entire elements of the device, which made it feel faster. Um, without having to necessarily, you know, adjust to having a high, low, mid, you know, kind of a, an auto tuning right. uh, refresh rate, which <laughs> by the way, that's what most of your devices do. Even yeah. if they are, let's say running at 120 or 144 Hertz, if they're opening an application, if you're opening an app that runs at 30 frames per second, that's the default refresh rate your device can run at. It's not going to be able to upscale that app to run faster, mostly like the camera app. Um, I feel like I well, think you should Sony kind of right. can. <laughs> Sony, Sony, well, that's what I say. Yeah. Sony was the other, the other kind of game. Uh, they, you know, they jumped into the game as well, and they said, "Look, we're going to give you the best experience you can get at 60, and we're going to try to upscale content like video and gaming experience, especially when you're watching content that is compressed, because there's also some audio improvements there for compressed audio that you play back on Sony." I yeah, think it's the, the DC three. Yeah, it's built into the actual UI to try to upscale not just the video with the upscaling option, but also with the audio. But I think that audio setting was also present on the Xperia One. It's not new, yeah, it but it's also present there. It's a, it's so a Sony thing, and and again, it's it's Sony not trying to step on their Walkman. So you're not getting that V60 style DAC amp, but they're still trying to improve um, the the sort of general consumer experience for compressed audio mp3 and streaming and stuff like that it, it's it, the the whole um i really felt a uh yes like iron man the mark ii I, has, that's yes, what the Xperia should be happen. called it's yeah we're, we're making that a thing so go spread the word um the um the, the whole conversation about higher refresh uh it, it was it was kind of stark for some of my family experiences mm -hmm. um you know, I had a, what was it? I had a OnePlus and the LG G8X at Thanksgiving last year. And no one commented on the fluidity of the display on the OnePlus. Like, it's not a thing. You, 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 don't, you don't look at that and you say, oh, well, what's happening here is a higher refresh rate. And my eyes have detected that this is so much better as I'm paging around the UI and I'm opening apps. And, and you know, like I had my, my siblings and, and my parents and, and we were, I was, you know, playing with toys, you know, like I, I get to, it's fun. I get to bring toys to Thanksgiving exactly. because it's also part of my job. That, not, not a topic of conversation. No one picked up on it. No one mentioned it. It didn't change the one plus in any way and even when i mentioned it you get kind of a half-hearted oh yeah i guess i kind of see what you're talking about and you put it side by side and you have to show it against another phone uh, another phone to see how it could be different um higher refresh rates are one of those things you live with and it's hard to go back after you've lived with it for a bit but dual display required zero explanation as soon as i open the lg g8x everyone checks out the second screen and what can you do with it and how does this work and can one app go across both screens oh yeah there's a seam there that looks kind of funky but if i turn it sideways oh this could work for a web browser and what about this and what about that and it's like having two phones in my pocket oh it's a little bit chunky you know like i i, I hand someone dual display and let them go and they, they, they can very easily sort of on their own figure out some of the things they like and some of the things they don't like about dual display. Higher refresh rate has never resonated with any of my family and friends outside of a very select few who have lived with that on like gaming monitors and other phone, like Razer phones. You know, the, the 10 people out in the world that had a Razer phone know what I'm talking about and, and will never settle for anything less than you know 120 hertz 120 on hertz on an on, and that's how we drop phones in this office boom uh, you, you I'll, I'll keep vamping so so <laughs> while we have this conversation in the android space i i like prettier displays i like higher refresh rates i like um you know higher resolutions and hdrs and all of these 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 fancy things that we talk about with phone screens but 
it, it's it's a bit more difficult. This this became um, this this became a part of the conversation that I just recently had between the OnePlus and the LG this year. Uh, I had to break that up into two separate videos, and it, it, it's not as easy as saying it's better. You know, uh, for for the same power penalty, you can run two full phone displays. So it's so that different. that's actually an interesting choice. Do you want one? singular more fluid experience for navigating the ui which might not be taken advantage of for certain apps and for certain games That's true. or do you want to run two full phones side by side for the best experience you can have in multitasking and when you phrase it like that there is no clear answer there is no correct well this is what a company should do it's it's the same as saying like, well, I want one really nice high spec gaming monitor or do I want dual displays for more productivity? You know, like that's a that's a very real consumer quandary. And so you just need to make sure you've got good information on both solutions so that someone can make a more informed informed purchasing decision. And and it's it is one of those things that you have to like if once you're in it you're in it it's hard to kind of unsee it once you see it and you appreciate that type of feature, but on average when I'm handing in the device most people in 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 the application that most of us are using they're not really realizing the benefit of it um, unless they're on Twitter and they consistently like to fly between the top and bottom comments on Twitter and you be able to kind of see that refresh. Yeah. Right. It is something that is very subjective, but I feel like also once we see more support inside of games, things that matter to people, the the, the application that they use the most, and they, they are able to see some of that benefit there, I think that becomes a little bit of better way to express the story. Uh, but at the end of the day, I feel like we are getting into the time where everybody's trying to push higher refresh rate as a feature, which is, I feel like this is what this year's uh, motto is. Uh, some devices can do QHD with 120, some devices do one or the other. Uh, some devices do 90, some devices do 144. So, but that that to me, I feel like that's kind of a theme that we're seeing in the beginning of 2020. Anybody sure. that can do higher refresh rate, they're jumping in the 90 bandwagon. And anybody that wants to go further more with the premium and the ultra premium, they're going into the 120 to the 144 experience. Um, I the think other trend other that I think I think we're we're seeing is is a, a return to some of these ideas that were very competitive for a while. And then we kind of mm -hmm. backed off on to, to make Samsung and iPhone clones. And now we're coming back to things like uh, more competitive stylus support. Productivity I, is, is, is kind a of a big factor. deal right now. And I'm really excited to see, you know, Motorola getting back in that game in a big way. You would think the company, you know, the, the parent company Lenovo would be all about pen touch and multi-mode and come on all, all of the yoga use. books and all of that stuff yeah you, you they would they would have they should have had a conversation with the moto team a long time ago it's like buddy we got to talk about that exactly the ability <laughs> look at that i mean that's just really pretty it's it I, I like it this is. a lot oh and i've got a screen off memo so let me just write some memos on this, please, please jog this down the menu. The order for our next time we're sitting down and is, talking is about easily lunch. found for under under a hundred and fifty dollars. Um, so I'm writing some real. I'm doing comments. business. I'm, uh, TK, I'm businessing right now. Business <laughs> at a hundred. Do me a favor, guys. If you guys know which device Juan Carlos is holding in his hand, um, oh, at, obviously we know it's an LG. But if you know the name, <laughs> drop the name. I was going to say. We, uh, we saw if Juan's holding a phone. Honestly, we know it's an LG. <laughs> it's, an, it's an LG. If he's not holding an LG. That's that's how you know you need to call for help. That's how it is. You know, like yeah, what would be that one tweet that I put out that everybody know that let everybody know <laughs> right. I'm in trouble. Juan says I hate LG. Or <laughs> <laughs> have you seen have you seen my the best features I the, the things that I love about the S20 Ultra? New video coming up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I kid, I kid. Uh, I, I it's mostly because so. Um, Yes, it is the LG Stylo. Is it the six? I think or the three or I, I don't. Yeah, I that, catch that's the Stylo six. It's the one that just came out. The Boost the mobile Stylo version six. is is shipped with tax, one hundred and fifty dollars. Absolutely fantastic, including and the I, stylus. I mean, I, and, for a I mean, second like, there, I thought you were uh, taking out a stylus and, and out of a. Honestly, I like copy? the design, the look of the phone. I think it looks better than the V sixty. It's obviously a super slow phone when we're judging it by any kind of performance metric. We're, but I, I'm yeah. easily on track for around 11 hours of screen on time 
I might be able to push it to 13 if I really play with it. But Stylo, the stylus silo is built in. The headphone jack, I mean, spoilers, because I'm going to do my audio deep dive. But the, the headphone jack is embarrassing phones that cost significantly more, which wow. shouldn't come as a grand surprise for an LG. Triple camera, and I've already shared a couple photos from on my Discord. It's mm -hmm. reasonable performance. The only thing is you do kind of need to to be patient with it, you know, for any type of like hardcore, I was you know, like say anything that. that's going to be intense use. But I like I've been for the last two days, I've been doing all of my Twitter, Discord, social media. Nice. And it's it's a lovely experience. Like it does not feel like a hundred and fifty dollar phone. And, and and like especially where we were with like I reviewed a cool pad last year that was a retail two hundred dollar phone. There was the Revelry, which was basically just a rebadged uh, Moto G seven on T Mobile. That would have been about a two hundred dollar phone. This is a a much nicer experience at one fifty than I was expecting it to be. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the things I, I really appreciate having things. And I think. Um, my hope is essentially that Juan and I will be able to do some uh, swapping of hardware very soon and we'll be able to kind of try to get the same story going on on both ends because I think I want I want you to get a chance to play around a little bit with um with the red shark with the black shark three uh, just to kind of get yeah. you into just seeing what Xiaomi has to I offer really want it yeah. yeah I feel no, like I need to touch at least one Xiaomi a year you know <laughs> <laughs> the quota you gotta get it in you gotta get it you gotta hit it in there and um um I just wanted to kind of comment real quick we got a super chat i want thank you very much again fat produce um uh, for uh, you know for the super chat and of course supporting the channel and he's asking is if you had any chance to read uh, the samsung rising uh, and i think this is the podcast talking about the inception of the, uh, the company if i'm not mistaken have I you had any no. chance to check it out i haven't personally uh i'm assuming uh you know uh, matt i think he has he had a good chance to check it out so definitely be adding that to my list of things to to check out in the near future um <laughs> aditya neil spot on dude man yeah no definitely he got in he got in we had a few guesses going on in the live chat that's why i was mentioning it um so with that being kind of like the general consensus i think do you feel like there's much to innovate in the sense because i mean obviously oneplus already put out their flagships they're mm -hmm. gonna tweak their 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 eight and the eight pro if they do end up releasing the uh you know the oneplus eight um t and the eight pro t if they go with that design uh yeah. but the other story that we also heard is the fact that the the i would say the relationship with mclaren is finally ended that yeah. we are no are we are no longer going to be seeing a oneplus phone a new version of a oneplus phone come out with the mclaren name and to me, that's a little bit sad, mostly because not not because the story is over and then the fact that obviously we won't see it is it just means that that phone that we saw at CES in 2020, that last McLaren with the built in ND filter with the monochrome yeah, the, the concept. The yeah, real, yeah, real that cool concept will never, ever come to light. That's what made me sad. It wasn't the yeah. fact that, it, you know, that the relationship was over is just that's a phone I wanted to see. It, it, it's a. The best way to describe it is if you were able to put in an ND filter onto a camera on a mobile device and the ability of controlling that with software, mm -hmm. just the ability of doing so was just, to me, was on top of the fact that it was a gorgeous device, the the, the stitching that was done on the back, the color representation, the papaya orange that is iconic with McLaren, we won't see. And yeah, I mean, um, the, the thing about a partnership like that is, is it made for a very one off and unique experience? And I'm sad to see those kinds of things go. I mean, I think there's yeah. something fun about about a limited edition, even if the phone isn't necessarily much different and it's just the packaging or the branding or something like that. It's, it's nice yeah. to have something out there special. The thing I doubt, I don't believe OnePlus is going to give up on special versions of their phones it's just that this automotive partnership I, it's interesting seeing how like the you know the the smartphone community has always had some notion of automobile comparisons you know porsche design on devices and um i, I want to say there have been a few other i'm i'm spacing now um a few other like one-off um, brand deals where you'd have like a logo of a phone, uh, I mean, of a car on a phone and stuff like that. But, um, you know, what, what I hope this opens the door to is just some other fresh approach for OnePlus. Um, I, I don't want OnePlus to become a company that is releasing 
variant after variant after variant minor refreshes every yeah. every month you know I, I don't want that for this label i'd really like to see a simplified one plus where we get small medium large and maybe yeah. that means price tag not necessarily in in terms of phone size but like i want a one plus nine a one plus nine pro and a one plus x you know, like, or, or maybe like really just keep them all in the same brand family, a one plus nine X, a one plus nine and a one plus nine pro. And we'd all know what those mean. Yeah. One plus isn't going to have a dozen different variants to support software would be a little bit easier to polish up. And I'd be mm -hmm. fine with them sunsetting this T series. And then if we only have those three phones then in the second half of the year, we can get a special one off. Like I'd love to yeah. see you know, like a one plus Aston Martin version since they're not doing McLaren anymore, you know, or the one plus Lamborghini or something. Yeah, exactly. Ferrari's got to be, you know, doing something, you know, they, 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 they pick up a phone, I'm sure, you know, uh, so so I'm hoping that like. It, it, I would really love to see more companies kind of streamline and focus, but then leave that door open so that because these devices aren't we're not we're not remaking the same phone with minor differences a dozen times over the course of the year that we can do something like a more limited partnership kind of also you know the additions that samsung does where you get like a darth vader edition or a marvel those um, those are very yeah the, the, the star wars edition i think that was um and, and they're felt... not they're not really different but they're that no. little bit special for that individual consumer samsung knows they're only going to make like a thousand of them and they're going to sell out instantly exactly that's great for the health of a brand that's great for the health of a, a company and it's fun for that crossover as as you know i'm a fan of this phone and i'm a fan of this media property or this other manufacturer so that's what i'd really like to see them do um, the, the whole market has just been upended by 5G and Qualcomm. And so anything we can do to make these devices a bit more fun again, knowing that price tags are going to be inflated over the next year, there's no way around what Qualcomm has done to this industry by removing the modem, you know, making it a separate component that manufacturers need to purchase and license to fully support. And they did it in a way where I feel like they put the pressure on manufacturers so that Oh, we know they had to buy the 5G modem. So uh, if they didn't turn on the 5G, well, maybe you should complain to the manufacturer. Well, that's on Qualcomm. That was it that was a bogus yet. thing to do to the smartphone industry when on device LTE was already better than separating it out as a separate component. So, you know, in, in light of that, I want to see some stray. I want to see Google make their own chipset. I, I want to see Samsung make the Exynos better. I want to see more competition so that we're not stuck in this position in 2022. I, and I, I feel like the story can definitely it needs it needs more more in, uh, you know basically more more focus on the conversation of basically different options different solutions uh the conversation is also the fact that the pixel may not actually be releasing with a flagship uh, processor the fact that you know samsung may be playing a game into that story so those are things that could change the conversation that we have in the late in the second part of 2020 we're mm -hmm. we're very close into the end of q2 well, um i mean you but, you want to talk about companies making that pivot to try and make things cheaper you know like even even the stylo we're in a power envelope somewhere in between a Snapdragon 400 and a Snapdragon 630. This mm -hmm. is the Helio. Even LG is looking at ways that they can like drop prices on products yeah, okay. and they no, went media tech. So this P35, again, it's not a screamer, but I'm getting epic battery life and it's reasonably uh, responsive for like your daily driver communication, multimedia, watching movies, that kind of stuff. Even LG is looking at how do we kind of untangle ourselves from this one behemoth monopolistic uh, you know, business entity that, again, I mean, like a Snapdragon 460, I don't even know if something like that exists, would probably be a little bit more powerful, but it wouldn't come in at $150 on Boost Mobile if they were no. doing the Qualcomm game right now. It, it's a tougher story, and but I also feel like um, MediaTek has changed their their approach to things. They're trying to compete a little bit more with Qualcomm. And one of the other things that I had a chance to get a chance to play with last year or, or attend was a a launch event for uh, their new their new chipset, their new five G enabled chipset for yeah. twenty twenty. So 
we're seeing them. We're seeing more of them. Uh, I know also that um, Oppo and Reno devices have featured, um, you know, MediaTek processors in the past as well, to and still try to perform really well with the dual camera setup and give you that, you know, it, um, I would say mid-range experience, but great optics in a sense. So yeah. OnePlus, I feel like we're for the most part are married to Qualcomm. They've been the, they've been the same way ever since the beginning of the original flagship killer. Uh, but I hope that we are able to make a better conversation. Um, you know, MediaTek, of course. Um, and, and the sad thing also is the fact that if you're ever going to be able to try to experience anything relating to the to uh, Huawei's processing power, you know, the, the Kirin chipset is also very, very powerful, very power efficient, has always performed quite well for me on devices that I've reviewed for them or even used. Um, and for me, those are those are the things we want to be able to see more because they're also integrating the 5G modem into the Kirin chipset. So Kirin could definitely be a big contender, but due to the current you know situation and conversations that mm -hmm. are being had it doesn't uh it's not conducive well, um, at this point and, and also you know it puts huawei in a weird position with the recent uh political issues where yeah. uh, kieran kieran chip fab might be disrupted by i was gonna say because of the suppliers yeah the supply chain's yeah. being interrupted and uh so we'll have to see how how things go and move forward with the with the next generation of chipsets uh, but I did want to acknowledge real quick one last uh, super chat that came in. This is from Onyx11. I'm assuming that's what the XI stands for. Um, if I'm wrong, then it is Onyx XL or XI. Um, I'd love to see a video with the Mach 1, uh, the uh, the Mach 2 uh, against the S20 Ultra and the iPhone 11 when it came to manual camera mode. Um, I don't really use iPhones as much, and I'm going to basically admit to this fact, but I didn't think iPhones had a manual mode, did they? Uh, you need another app. So I mean, like if you were using Filmic or uh, yeah, what film, is the, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So I have maybe, um, there, there's another manual photography app that I use for my photos. I can't remember what it's called now. I think it might just okay. be called like manual camera or something lame like that. Something to that effect. Yeah. So I'm it was mostly I always I always felt like iPhone did a good... oh, ProCam. ProCam Pro, Pro okay. can capture raw and, or you can also save it as a TIFF if you want to save it as a TIFF, but it's it's Filmic and ProCam. Filmic and ProCam. So um, as much as I'd love to be able to help on that one, I don't know if I have enough time to be able to compile enough footage between the two. Um, and yeah. it's mostly because of the, what I'll probably will maybe focus on that once I'm able to get another unit. Um, and once I'm able to get my hand on uh, a, di a different unit, because my time with this, unfortunately, is down to maybe 72 hours from now or maybe 48 hours from now. <laughs> it will be in the mail going back to Sony. So, um, And I'm, but yeah, I'm, no, I'm pretty I, close behind you there. So I'm scrambling to also just get all my samples done, which is why you don't see completed videos when we have to work so hard at front loading all it, of the it footage. Is, it is. It's, it's a use. tough it's a tough story to try to compile things and trying to get everything. So my goal for the rest of today and tomorrow um, is to try to push out more, or well, not push out, but trying to basically get more footage and content off the device as much as possible. I have one more live stream that's going to go hopefully Monday on uh, Amazon Live to try to do a hands-on with the Xperia 1 Mach 2, uh, mostly because I'm part of the ecosystem there. And I feel like if it'll be one of the only people that will ever talk about this, this phone on that, uh, on that platform. Um, I did get a chance to hang out with uh, both, I think, David and, and Aditya over on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the Mach 1 because um, I felt like it's a good story to kind of, you know, recap 2020, 2019 devices in 2020 and how do they handle. And I feel like the, the Mach 1 still has some things to offer. It's, it's definitely not, I wouldn't dismiss it as a device, but I feel like if you're looking for a 4K device at an as at a reasonable price for about 799 or 798 it still is a good content uh, consumption type of a device decent cameras on the back with you know again i wish at some point and i couldn't get a straight answer from sony but the short way of saying it is um i hope that we do get some form of cinema pro on the xperia one is it possible i don't know i could hope for it uh, natively supported and some functional uh, manner, a little bit more than what we have with the manual, well, the pro mode that we have in the camera app. Um, but yeah, no, definitely appreciate uh, the comment, Onyx. And again, thank you very much for the super chat on that as well. Um, I, 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 there's a lot of things that we can cover when it comes to this device, and there's a lot of beautiful things to kind of just be able to share. Um, I mean, I took it with me this morning with the family walk, and mm -hmm. just wow, like photography with this phone is enjoyable. Yeah, it's um, really fun to shoot on. 
really like and and we're we're having a good weather this weekend very different than what we had it last weekend it's not super hot it's nice and a little bit cool in the morning um you know just taking some pictures of like i took a picture of a snail i'll be posting some of those on instagram in a little um you know just a little bit of you know dew drops on le uh, on, on like some plants just getting that <laughs> nice reflection off the sun All right you enjoy taking pictures i'm just it's it's a it's a it's a creative just juices kind of just being able to channel all of that stuff in there. So for me, a lot of fun. Um, I am going to be spending some more time with the OnePlus Eight Pro uh, just to kind of put together my thoughts as far as the you know brand new uh, you know ninety frames per second. It's great to have, but you have to kind of also look at it from the pros and cons of having such a high refresh rate. Do you want to stick to ninety? You want to stick to sixty? Because again, well, it's I, I don't know. More. TK, a bunch of people said you know the week it was under embargo. Um, before people could buy it, that there's there, that it, the one pluses are too expensive and no one wants that and they're not doing anything to be worth it for the monies. So, I mean, that's your whole review right there. Uh, uh, someone I, said that before. We should just and have that title. Game, and uh, <laughs> that's the final word because we can only talk about phones while they're popular on YouTube. Um, exactly. Once YouTube so you stops into the ecosystem. Making, Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. So basically uh, no phone is ever worth buying unless it's really popular for a YouTuber's ad revenue on YouTube. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's <laughs> we shouldn't even be talking about it. Uh, I, I'm, I, I mostly try to focus on, I, I'm, just, you know, <laughs> I'm very surprised that the, I have such a good, uh, or I've had a good response with the Sony, uh, with the Sony brand. Uh, my Xperia yeah. 5 didn't do that well last year. I didn't have a lot of response, to, uh, good response with it. But it could have also been maybe a timing situation of when I was able to get my hands on an Xperia 5. Uh, but I feel like with the Xperia, um, the, with the Mark II has been doing great. And uh, we've been able to contribute a good, uh, a good amount into it. And hopefully I'll contribute a few more videos before uh, my time with the initial batch is done. Uh, but at the end of the day, what I feel like if you're looking for a device in 2020 and you want to focus on photography, if that's a main focus for you and you want to be able to get that pro level experience. And this is from a, from a company that is known to have an alpha team for cameras, a Walkman team for audio, a PlayStation team for gaming. And this device marries a lot of those conversations into one. And it is improving mm -hmm. the conversation for what we, we should expect from a mobile device in 2020 with a 4K UHD display. Uh, I feel like the Xperia 1 Mach 2 should be something that you can consider. Um, if you pre-order, you definitely are able to pick up a pair of headphones in there as well for free. They're about 200 bucks. So that may help with the price appreciation there. Because if you think about it, uh, it, I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like 1200 is is a definitely a good price for it for what they're offering um, no mm -hmm. 5g as far as i understand and i would love to be wrong on this one if they are changing it and by the time it becomes available in the market and you know later on i think is it later june or beginning of july I forgot when the timing is going to be um i would be very happy to stand up and say i am so sorry i was wrong and i'm happy to have 5g welcome to the club uh, but we'll have to see how the story <laughs> kind of plays then it's a little hard to tell where we are now I'm I'm um, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be unlikely, but but yeah, we, yeah. we still need to to see uh, or if there is anything that they can do to like I don't know put out a firmware or some other type I, of improvement. I, but I but again, it, yeah, it's a Sony, firmware thing. So Sony's relationships with carriers in North America, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be unlikely that's going to change. So uh, I, I again, like I'm with you. I I hope I'm wrong there, but we'll we'll have to see. It's a wait and see kind of kind of situation. And then just a quick answer. I think I just saw a question coming in here. Um, so which platform will be going live on with the Xperia 1 Mach 2? Uh, this is actually uh, the Amazon Live uh, system. If you're not familiar with it, Amazon has a live streaming service that's built in. It's a similar, I would say, creator-based uh, environment that's present. It used to be purely for companies that used to be able to make videos for their own content. But they also now mm -hmm. have a creator day, uh, system, which um, you know, I, YouTube creators or social media influencers are able to participate in. And, and then they're able to jump in and do basically live streams on devices on the ecosystem. Uh, I think one of the only requirements is obviously that the hardware needs to be sold on Amazon so you can talk about it. You can't really just bring in something that isn't sold there. Um, so what? one of the reasons why I'm waiting for Monday, because uh, the on June 1st is when the pre-orders go on. And to my understanding, at least from Sony's website, 
Um, Amazon, Best Buy, and B&H are the, the three uh, main channels to be able to purchase devices, and they should mm -hmm. all be featuring uh, the free promo. So look forward to that. It'll be Monday morning, somewhere in the morning uh, for hopefully about an hour, an hour or so conversation about the Xperia 1 Mark II uh, before I have to put it back in a box and ship it back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say that like I'm, I'm, I'm about to ship off like, you know, um, long lust you know or like a break off a relationship with a loved one or something like that <laughs> i know i mean the, again the phone makes an impression so uh it, it does so, it does it's a lasting impression it's it, for me it's it's a um it's a it's a weird like i i appreciate the things that they've done i, I appreciate the the improvements the 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 tech that they've put in there and just the photography my god does mm -hmm. it look good this is and I, I, again, you you have to try it, and if you have had an opportunity to check it out, you definitely should be able to get, kind of check it out. Um, and for me, I like the um, the functions that we have there. There's also actually a companion app. I don't know if you've played with it on your phone. When you hook it up to a PC, there's a companion desktop application for Sony devices mm -hmm. that also helps with backup, restoring, firmware updates, and so on. So I've been playing with that as well. So try to just, again, do a little bit more focused stuff on there. Uh, but what's going on with you? What 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 is the next project that you're working on right now? I guess where it's something that that people can look forward to from you. I again, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm front loading as much Sony as I can, so that you know when I get the message after you that I've got to send it back, that I'll, I'll be ready to. Um, my iPhone SE review is going to be going live probably in about a half hour. Um, so I have that wrapped up. I've got to finish the TCL 10 Pro full review. I've got to finish mm -hmm. my OnePlus 8. I'm going to do a combo review on the OnePlus 8s, which isn't really fair to the OnePlus 8, but I feel like I can't do two separate videos right now. There's just a little yeah. too much on my plate. So I'm going to try and do longer term coverage separating the phones. But talking about the brand as a whole, after my experience is reviewing it opposite or comparing it, I should say, against the LG V60, um, I still have another V60 versus Xperia showdown that I want to put together. And then... Um, what was the other? Oh, and then, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm oh. not going to probably do the same, you know, spectrum of videos on the stylo. But this is a phone that at $150 deserves its own audio review. I mean, it's yeah. it's special um, in, in regards to how we treat our ears to have a deal like that. And then I want to do a really nice like there's something you got to talk about. There's some pros and cons. But my experiences with this phone have been phenomenal at $150. I mean, just like you, we, we get real up, uh, you know, that, that YouTuber bang for buck. We're really concerned about the bang for buck at $150. You, you you're willing to forgive a lot. And there's a lot of bang, much, yeah, very little buck. Yeah. There's not much you need to forgive on a $150 phone that has this much to offer for headphone battery life a nice big large display it blends say, yeah. in almost exactly the same as it would like if you were walking around with a v60 triple camera i mean like there's a lot going on there so um i i, I want to give it a good fair shake um against a bunch of things like the stylo is consistently i feel like probably lg's top selling device mm -hmm. um and and i feel like they're doing something a little bit special from like the last stylo that I used, I think it was like a stylo four and it was mm -hmm. just like kind of this plasticky garbagey low power phone. Um, that's not the case anymore. And uh, if you're on, if you're on an MVNO like boost, uh, this is a, a surprisingly good deal. So, uh, so that, that's kind of like the focus is going to be spread at like the bookends of the market from the absolute less cheapest phone I can pick up right now in the United States to some of the most expensive phones that are going to be available to buy. And, you know, the, the window between those bookends, like the spectrum of experience between those bookends, not as broad as you would think a thousand dollar price difference would lead you to believe. So uh, it's, it's going to be some fun back and forth. I, I, I'm, I'm loving the conversation between Aditya and Gary going back and forth. Like, I know, right? I was, I was kind of like, like picking back through that too in the live chat also. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's a... Uh, it's just fun, just fun to watch the conversation because like, we're we're trying to you know keep things going on. And, and if, yeah, 
Uh, for me, uh, like I said, I, I think the OnePlus will be my, uh, I think, uh, sorry, I think the Pixel Buds 2 probably will be my video, that and the OnePlus um, 8 Pro, 8 8 Pro conversation when it comes to gaming. I did, uh, the last thing I don't want to obviously sidetrack is another conversation long thing, but um, if you are a OnePlus 8 or, one, uh, sorry, OnePlus 8 Pro user, it seems like a next update that OnePlus is pushing out will be disabling that new uh, filter or that new camera I don't know, that we talked about. really the... bothered by that. I mean, it's such yeah, a, a, a gimmick of a filter it. for the it's, camera anyway. It was cute. So I... I, not that I not that I didn't like it. I mean, I I, well, I don't really have a big preference to it. It's a unique filter to start with. Um, not my style of filter uh, selection when I wanted to take a picture with it. I saw it. I showcased it in the video when I first did the unboxing. I made sure people were aware of it. Um, and then we talked about it a, a few weeks ago on the live chat uh, here with the Saturday Morning with Tech. Um, and at the end of the day, honestly, if they disable it, I don't think many people are going to be really missing out much as far as the experience. I think what realistically at the end of the day you need to focus on the fact is I think this was an experiment for a sensor. It's something for them to bring in. Um, yeah. It, you know, and then the thing is, it wasn't so as as like creepy. You know, it wasn't an X-ray filter. You know, like uh, it was very selective what you could actually see through. And it was basically just the cheap plastic coverings on things like um you know, like remote controls like the the one thing i could get it to work on was this like garbage vizio remote control i have for a tv and like mm -hmm. the nearly translucent plastic coverings that you have on security cameras uh, this this wasn't like oh i can use this to like you know see through Superman the powers, polycarb right? cover on on you know a nicer phone like that that wasn't the thing or like oh i can see through clothes no nah, that wasn't it so but, I understand that the the desire to minimize any creeper factor. I think that's but what this one is, was yeah. really low risk. I pre yeah, and and you know it just it was another thing for them. I mean that was just the biggest the couple of things that were going on for both for on OnePlus this week, uh, from both on, on the gaming side as well as on the camera side that we talked about. But with that being said, um, I do notice that we are actually crossing the to two hours and fifteen minutes, which is generally how we usually do it. Never ever have we been able to go in under two hours, um, and we can definitely nah. go on for hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> but I realize um, uh, I want to say first and foremost thank you to everybody in the in the chat Aditya David um, Gary um, you know Andrew everybody in the in the chat as well as some of the new followers I noticed again this this video is quite like. I am very humble with the amount of people watching the uh, the video. I hope you guys are enjoying the conversation. Uh, Juan and I are good friends. We've known each other ever. We've met each other back at, at a long, long time ago at an Honor 8 event in San Francisco and then realized that we lived literally 30 minutes away from each other. And that's how crazy it is. So um, with that being said, um, thank you very much, Juan, for jumping in, coming on the conversation, having that conversation with us here. I feel like this is... Um, it, I enjoy being able to chat with you, not just to catch up, but also to kind of basically see back and forth. The conversation is how yeah, we are sure. able to basically shape our view or help assist us in shaping our view in, about how tech can help us. Um, the Xperia 1 Mark II, Mark II is an amazing device in what it's offering, an amazing device in what it's promising us to deliver. Um, I cannot wait to get my my hands on again. I'm shooting for the purple one. Hopefully, that'll be available on day one. It's not. They're not going to just release the black one first and then the purple one like weeks later. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, and I gotta um, say, I mean, like, I think it held up okay for for a live stream. I mean, did this all on Wi-Fi? You know, I'm I'm now up to sixty percent battery. So I was charging it while it was connected. So uh, the entire video, if you guys have, I mean, you may have caught it at the beginning if you jumped in later in the stream. Uh, but Juan has been on the, the Xperia 1 Mark II the entire time. We are using the actual device in this video conversation. And I initially was purely throwing it in there because he was like, TK, I got to jump in on the live stream. Maybe I can do it on a phone. Uh, but I wanted him to kind of hold it. So I was like, oh, maybe try with a different one. And then he surprised me. <laughs> like with just... We were planning at some point, like I would switch over to something else. And you're like, you know, well, we've just, the conversation's been doing fine. Let's see how, let's see if the Xperia can hang. And it's, exactly. it's, it's doing surprisingly well. So it, it, it's, it's it is okay. not only surprisingly well, but also hang, hanging in pretty good with the headphones that you're using audio input on the external, as well oh, as the ability. And I, should, I should mention that I'm streaming through Firefox on the Xperia 1 through StreamYard. <laughs> onto youtube on, which is with external like audio pr pretty yeah you think that's pretty decent like um it's pretty solid 
it is very solid. And I think if in many situations, some people were commenting that in the live stream, uh, your video looked a lot better than mine. And I think that's due to my <laughs> issues with the Wi-Fi at home. I don't yeah. want to <laughs> and I'm no, using like, another, TK's I'm actual using image, if you could see, yeah, it, the, the, the cameras are way better on that side. But I feel like for, I, I was just blessed with slightly better internet connectivity for most of this live stream. <laughs> it, it's dead. Uh, and it's, unless Lex is sitting on a um, on, on a tablet watching her, her favorite show streaming as well as watching TV with another thing going on, which just sucks <laughs> up all the internet. So for it's a different experience. But also want to say thank you very much to um, Netty, Net, uh, Netty G. Hopefully I'm saying that Yeti. Um, thank you for the super sticker. Appreciate that very much. Um, and with that being said, hope you guys are doing well. Um, we'll obviously be talking a lot more on different platforms. Um, please, please, please make sure to check out Juan Carlos's uh, Patreon, some gadget guy over on Patreon, um, as well as making sure to follow him on all the social medias. Uh, Juan, if uh, for, for, the, for the very few that are in the stream that don't know who you are, um, how do we get in touch with you? How do, how do people connect? Of course, uh, you search for some gadget guy and you'll find a bunch of places around the web. My site, somegadgetguy.com, is kind of where I just dump everything. I occasionally write some editorials, but it's really just a home for the other projects that I'm working on. Uh, but YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, you search for some gadget guy, you'll find me. And then I also uh, host and produce with Newegg. So if you check out the recent Newegg content, especially the series we've been working on for work from home and homeschooling, uh, tech tech products for that. My my buddy Trisha Hirschberger and I have been trying to keep up the family and the human side of tech while Absolutely. doing a new egg production there too. So just a special shout out. The team at New Egg has been putting together some phenomenal stuff. Um, but you know, it, 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 there's a lot of content out there. So uh, hopefully, some folks will go and check it out because I feel it's deserving of more attention than it's really been getting. But um, I, I I think it's fun. I, I think you'll like that too. So some gadget guy, New Egg. Uh, the various other podcast appearances and guest shows and all that fun stuff. And we get around, TK. You I was going to say, we around, get around. So. And you'll see us back and forth <laughs> online. Um, I want to say thanks also, uh, quick thanks to Steve. Um, thank you very much. Um, merci beaucoup, mon ami. Uh, you know, he said basically you know, in French, uh, restez en sécurité, mes amis. Be safe, you know, be safe, my friends. Um, I always appreciate having wow. him in the chat as well. Uh, <laughs> I it surprised me a couple of weeks ago. I didn't realize Steve spoke French, but I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, I could could have probably gleaned that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it just uh, it's always nice to have have everybody in in the in the chat. So um, be safe. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe. All the information for both Juan and myself will be in the description below, as well as the stuff regarding the Sony pre order and of course the OnePlus. If you guys are thinking about picking up something like that. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you very much and be safe. Bam. Nice seeing you. <laughs> bye bye. And I always remember that StreamYard is $2.